okay a very good morning to all of you uh now if the audio and visual both are fine just show me a thumbs up in the chat box good morning all of you uh just show me a thumbs up audible great thank you so much okay so two weeks left for your exam i hope you are in proper spirits and abhi acche se padhai chal rahi hai all of you yes everything fine i agree but i hope you people are fine now tension ho raha hoga anxiety ho rahi hogi and so many of you would be thinking ki now i am going to quit right but this is not the time to quit theek hai this is the time when you have to work harder and you have to prove yourself this time so i am not going to waste your time uh, as far as obs is concerned obs may whatever important questions i wanted to discuss with you i have given it in the form of a pdf on my telegram group so many of you keep on asking me about the name of my uh, telegram group so the name of my telegram group you have to search in capital letters that is very important that you search in capital letters and it is obg obg by sakshi aroda hans right there are two three groups jo ki maine dekhe hain which are by my name but i am available only in the group which has around 34000 members right so that is the group where i am available so uh, there are so many other groups yesterday i was searching there are three four groups uh, going on on telegram by my name some have 10000 members some have 12000 members but they are not my original groups i am only in the group where you are going to get in capital letters obg by sakshi arora hans so all the pdfs all the important things which i want to share with you they are available on that uh telegram group go to the media and media mein ja ke files mein you can get all important images which i which i want you to revise all important obs ke questions which i want you to revise along with blank pdf and annotated pdf and aaj ke session ki bhi jo blank pdf hai that is available on the uh, telegram group right okay uh is this available after live yes it will be available and i am not going to remove it chalo ab let us start with gyni revision ab gyni mein na jo questions which they have started asking you are based on hormonal status and this is not the time jab main bahut sare concepts build kara pau quickly hame revise karna hai so i am going to give you tricks on how you are going to solve questions which are related to uh all the hormones right so some important concepts we will quickly revise see whether it is a female or whether it is a male so we have the hypothalamus hypothalamus may say gnrh is released in a pulsatile manner so at puberty gnrh release hota hai from hypothalamus this gnrh acts on anterior pituitary and chahe male ho chahe female ho lh and fsh are released from anterior pituitary right अब फीमेल्स में एफ एस एच जो है इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट ऑन ओवरी एंड अंडर द इफेक्ट ऑफ एफ एस एच टू इंपॉर्टेंट हॉर्मोन्स विल बी रिलीज इनबिन बी एंड ईस्ट्रोजन कौन से सेल्स रिलीज करेंगे ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल्स सो ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल्स से अगेन दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन कि ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल्स से इनबिन बी निकलेगा एंड ईस्ट्रोजन निकलेगा दिस मीन्स कि अगर किसी फीमेल को ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल ट्यूमर है ओवरी का राइट सो दिस वो ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल ट्यूमर ऑफ द ओवरी विल आल्सो रिलीज ईस्ट्रोजन इन अदर वर्ड्स अ ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल ट्यूमर ऑफ द ओवरी इज अ फेमिनाइजिंग ट्यूमर ऑफ द ओवरी एंड इफ समन आस्क यू वॉट इज द ट्यूमर मार्कर फॉर ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल ट्यूमर इन ए बिन बी राइट clear to all of you now under the effect of lh what is going to happen number 1 lh is responsible for lh surge and is lh surge say lh surge is responsible for ovulation so for ovulation lh surge is needed and ovulation pe jitne bhi important questions hain i have covered in obs with you but still i am telling you they ask 
so when the levels of lh start increasing that is the point which is called as lh surge right so if someone asks you ki lh surge and ovulation ke beech mein how much is the time interval the best answer for this question is 32 to 36 hours but if 32 to 36 hours is not given in the options this is the best then you are going to mark 24 to 36 hours number one point so if someone asks you what is the time difference between lh surge and ovulation answer is 32 to 36 hours second best answer 24 to 36 hours agar koi puche what is the time difference between lh peak and ovulation so do you understand when lh levels start increasing that is what is the beginning of lh surge and when they reach a height the peak that is lh peak so lh peak and ovulation ke beech mein time difference is 10 to 12 hours if they ask you which hormone is responsible for lh surge so estrogen is responsible for lh surge so which hormone is responsible for lh surge estrogen please don't mind my handwriting this is how it is ab i can't change it now but this is how my handwriting is theek hai now so lh kya karta hai lh is responsible number 1 for ovulation and number 2 lh acts on theca cells and from theca cells androgens are produced so in all females from puberty onwards ovary is not only releasing estrogen but ovary is also releasing androgen right so this is what happens in females now what happens in males in males FSH acts on Sertoli cells and Sertoli cells say again what will be produced inhibin and LH will act on Leydig cells and Leydig cells say what is going to be produced testosterone and this was your question which came in FMG 2023 that testosterone is produced by which cells testosterone is produced by Leydig cells under the effect of which hormone it is produced under the effect of uh, Leydig cells right Uh, under the effect of lh now one more question which they ask you ki theek hai lh is the one which is acting on leydig cells to produce testosterone right a question jo wo puchte hain they ask you ki which is the first stimulus which is the first stimulus for sorry first stimulus for l theca cells uh, sorry just one second first stimulus for leydig cells to produce testosterone kya ho raha hai what is happening first stimulus for leydig cells to produce testosterone so what is the first stimulus first stimulus ka answer is not lh first stimulus ka answer is hcg again this was a question which was asked in neat 2023 have you understood ki males mein kaise aa raha hai females mein how is the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis functioning how is the hypothalamic pituitary testicular action functioning coming to next thing estrogen always has a negative feedback on fsh and estrogen usually has the word usually likha hai usually has a negative feedback on lh except except what is that except except is if estrogen is more than equal to 200 picograms for 48 hours then it leads to lh surge that means then it will increase lh so normally lh decrease normally estrogen decreases lh and every time estrogen decreases fsh normally it decreases lh but only in one condition estrogen will increase lh that is jab estrogen ke levels will be more than 200 picograms for 48 hours then estrogen increases lh and that is what is called as lh surge i hope you will remember this and that is why i told you which hormone is responsible for lh surge it is estrogen which is responsible for lh surge this was something which i told you just now have you all understood are you all understanding just show me a thumbs up if you are understanding
if you are understanding i'm just waiting for a moment so that i can get your thumbs up to see whether you are understanding or not got it great abhinandan thank you and just tell me one more thing tum logo ko speed zyada to nahi lag rahi hai i need to revise a lot more stuff with you that is why i'm going a little fast okay great chalo a progesterone progesterone kya karta hai progesterone has a negative feedback on lh and on fsh jab bhi progesterone is in higher concentrations first stimulus beta hcg tha i have made you right first stimulus was hcg theek chalo jab bhi progesterone high concentrations mein hoga it will have a negative feedback on lh and fsh testosterone always has a negative feedback on lh and fsh prolactin has a negative feedback on gnrh because prolactin has a negative feedback on gnrh that is why jab bhi prolactin ke levels increased honge whenever prolactin levels are increased you will have decreased lh and decreased fsh right ab is basis ke sath we are going to do some important conditions jis pe questions aate hain but before i tell you that one very important concept which you have to remember ye jo gnrh hota hai it is you can make it in labs also so we are making synthetic gnrh ye jo synthetic gnrh hai whenever you are giving synthetic gnrh in a pulsatile manner जब भी आप GnRH को पल्सटाइल मैनर में देते हो इट इंक्रीजेज LH, एच इट इंक्रीजेज एफ एस एच एंड इट इंक्रीजेज ईस्ट्रोजन राइट दैट इज वाई इट इज यूज फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ डिलेड प्यूबर्टी एंड इट इज यूज इन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ कैलमिन सिंड्रोम राइट So, जब भी आप जी एन आर एच को पल्सटाइल मैनर में दोगे इट विल इंक्रीज एल एच बिकॉज नॉर्मली भी बॉडी में जी एन आर एच इज रिलीज इन अ पल्सटाइल मैनर एंड जब भी जी एन आर एच को हम पल्सटाइल मैनर में देंगे वो स्टिमुलेट करेगा पिट्यूट्री को सो एल एच एफ एस एच बढ़ेगा एंड वांस एल एच एफ एस एच इंक्रीजेज इट इंक्रीजेज ईस्ट्रोजन दैट इज वाई इन ऑल दो केसेज वेर एवर यू आर गेटिंग डिलेड प्यूबर्टी you have to give synthetic gnrh in a pulsatile manner on the other hand gnrh ko jab hum continuous manner mein denge what it is going to do when you are going to give gnrh in a continuous manner it will decrease lh it will decrease fsh and it will decrease estrogen that is why in all those conditions it will decrease estrogen so that is why in all those conditions jahan par estrogen ke levels high hote hain so jitni bhi hyper estrogenic conditions hoti hain in all hyper estrogenic conditions you are going to give gnrh in a continuous manner for example precocious puberty for example endometriosis for example fibroid so in sub me endometriosis is a hyperestrogenic condition fibroid is a hyperestrogenic condition precocious puberty ka matlab ye ki estrogen zyada tha isliye jaldi puberty ho gayi now you will say ki ma'am hirsutism me kyon denge gnrh in a continuous manner that is why i told you here कि LH जो है इट एक्ट ऑन थीका सेल्स टू प्रोड्यूस एंड्रोजेंस तो जब भी फीमेल को हिरसुटिज्म हो रहा है दैट मीन्स उसकी बॉडी में एंड्रोजेंस ज्यादा है एंड जब एंड्रोजन ज्यादा है तो हम क्या करेंगे आई वॉन्ट टू डिक्रीज LH ताकि LH डिक्रीज हो एंड एंड्रोजेंस प्रोडक्शन डिक्रीजेस दैट इज वाई इन हिरसुटिज्म ऑल्सो यू आर गोइंग टू यूज Continuous GnRH. Similarly, males में males में हम use करते हैं continuous GnRH for managing uh, prostate cancer. In males में you can use continuous GnRH for managing prostate cancer. Continuous GnRH and 
सिंथेटिक पल्सटाइल जी एन आर एच के यूजर्स यू शुड बी नोइंग क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू येस चलो नाउ गो टू द एंड ऑफ योर पी डी एफ इन द एंड ऑफ योर पी डी एफ आई हैव अटैच अ टेबल वेर वी हैव रिटर्न कि प्यूबर्टी वॉट इज प्यूबर्टी एंड वॉट इज प्रिकॉशियस प्यूबर्टी एंड वॉट इज अ डिलेड प्यूबर्टी ऑल दीज डेफिनेशन आई हैव गिवन यू ओवर हियर If you go on, I mean towards the last page, 26 of your PDF. So page 26 of your PDF, me, I have told you some important points related to puberty. Puberty, me, you have to remember that a normal age, kya hoti hai puberty ki females me, 10 and a half years. Males me, 11 and a half years. What is the sequence of puberty in females? Very very important. The first sign of puberty in females is growth spurt, right? Do not say breast budding. First sign is always growth spurt. उसके बाद जो first visible sign होता है, that is breast budding या थिलार की. Then pubic hair appear होते हैं, that is pubar की. Then आता है peak height velocity and then minar की. So the sequence is growth spurt. followed by breast budding then that is called as thilark then pubark then peak height velocity and then menarche so please be very careful over here puberty agar 10 and a half years pe start ho rahi hai to menarche normally hoti hai 12 and a half years pe yani ki there is a difference of 2 years between the onset of puberty and onset of menarche right males mein agar koi puche what is the first sign of puberty testicular enlargement keval itta janna hai right next you have to know ki for breast development in females estrogen is needed for pubic hair and axillary hair development females may be for pubic hair and axillary hair you need androgens right now what is precocious puberty precocious puberty is if puberty is happening at less than 8 years in a female or less than 9 years in males please remember precocious puberty is more common in females what is the most common cause of precocious puberty idiopathic एंड क्या ट्रीटमेंट होगा प्रिकॉशियस प्यूबर्टी का कंटिन्यूस जी एन आर एच प्रिकॉशियस प्यूबर्टी मीन्स दैट वेन प्यूबर्टी इज हैपनिंग एट लेस देन एट ईयर्स एंड उसके दो साल के बाद मेन्स्ट्रुएशन होगा सो वॉट इज प्रिकॉशियस मेन्स्ट्रुएशन इफ मेन्स्ट्रुएशन हैपन्स एट लेस देन टेन ईयर्स राइट डिलेड प्यूबर्टी का क्या मतलब है डिलेड प्यूबर्टी का मतलब है मोर देन थर्टीन ईयर्स हैव पास्ट so 8 years precocious puberty 13 years delayed puberty beech mein 10 and a half years normally puberty seen in females females ka yaad rakho males nahi pucha jata right so if puberty doesn't happen by 13 years in females that is delayed puberty delayed puberty is more common in males and the most common cause is constitutional delay इसके अलावा देर इज वन मोर रीजन फॉर डिलेड प्यूबर्टी एंड दैट इज कैलम सिंड्रोम वॉट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस जस्ट नाउ आई टोल्ड यू कि चाहे डिलेड प्यूबर्टी हो या कैलम सिंड्रोम हो वॉट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस पल्सटाइल जी एन आर एच राइट this will be this session will be available even after i end the session even till one year after this it will be available i'm not going to remove it right chalo this will be available don't worry bachcho this session will be available don't worry at all now comes uh, definitions for primary amenorrhea वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि एमिनोरिया किसे कहते हैं प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया की डेफिनेशन क्या है एंड सेकेंडरी एमिनोरिया क्या है सो प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया डेफिनेशन इज इफ मेन्स्ट्रुएशन डजेंट हैपन बाय 15 इयर्स ऑफ एज सो इफ मेन्स्ट्रुएशन इज नॉट हैपनिंग बाय 15 इयर्स ऑफ एज इन अ फीमेल विद ब्रेस्ट बडिंग ओके, 
so if menstruation is not happening by 15 years of age in a female with breast budding or by 13 years of age in absence of breast budding right so breast budding nahi present hai by 13 years of age and tab menstruation nahi hua and by 15 years of age tab nahi hua if breast budding is present second definition is just now i told you ki puberty ke signs and menstruation ke beech mein normally there is a gap of 2 years right ab ye keh rahe hain ki 3 years ho gaye thilarki ko Thrilarchy has happened three years back, and your patient is not showing any signs of menstruation. So these two definitions for FMG people, I want all of you to remember. PPT is on uh, my Telegram group. This this is entirely present on my Telegram group, right? You can download it there from there immediately. So this is the definition for. प्राइमरी एम एन ऑरिया दो डेफिनेशन याद रखोगे एब्सेंस ऑफ मेन्स्ट्रुएशन बाय फिफ्टीन ईयर्स इफ ब्रेस्ट बडिंग इज प्रेजेंट और बाय थर्टीन ईयर्स इफ ब्रेस्ट बडिंग इज नॉट प्रेजेंट एंड नंबर टू एब्सेंस ऑफ मेन्स्ट्रुएशन विद इन थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ थिलार्की अब देखो क्वेश्चन क्या आया था ये दिस ईयर इट हैज कम इन नीट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विल यू सस्पेक्ट प्राइमरी एम एन ऑरिया so number option a tha failure to maintain menarche by failure to attain menarche by 15 years yes failure to attain menarche even after 3 years of thilarche yes high levels of tsh and short stature no failure of development of breast by 13 years so obviously menstruation nahi hua and there is no development of breast by 13 years right so the answer becomes a b c three definitions i want you to remember 15 years breast budding present 13 years breast budding absent right and three years have passed and the thilarchy was present three years ke baad after thilarchy still you are not getting any menstruation so failure of uh, to attain menarche even after three years of thilarchy ये तीनों डेफिनेशंस यू शुड बी नोइंग सो ए बी एंड डी सॉरी इट्स नॉट ए बी एंड सी इट इज ए बी एंड डी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस चलो दैट इज प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया सेकेंडरी एमेनोरिया व्हेन देयर इज एब्सेंस ऑफ मेंस्ट्रुएशन फॉर 90 डेज इन अदर वर्ड्स फॉर थ्री मंथ्स इन अ फीमेल हु वॉज प्रीवियसली मेंस्ट्रुएटिंग नॉर्मली right so 3 months ho gaye she was earlier menstruating normally but now 3 months have passed and she is not menstruating remember if any female is having less than 9 cycles in a year even she should be investigated for secondary amenorrhea clear to all of you yes now i want all of you to be very very careful because question aayega where they are going to talk about lh fsh and they are going to talk about various conditions and you will have to make the diagnosis so suppose your question says that there is a female who's come to you with primary amenorrhea and she is complaining of cyclical pain in abdomen jaise hi aap ye padhoge cyclical pain in abdomen right it means and she is a case of primary amenorrhea primary amenorrhea hai and cyclical pain in abdomen hai it means only one condition and that is cryptomenorrhea 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 ka kya matlab hai hidden menstruation and hidden menstruation ka most common cause kya hota hai most common cause for hidden menstruation is imperforate hymen imperforate hymen that's the most common cause for cryptomenorrhea ab aage question mein they can give you ki uterus present hai in a case of cryptomenorrhea uterus present hoga lh fsh absolutely normal honge breast development absolutely normal hoga pubic hair and axillary hair absolutely normal 
so the only problem is that there is the menstruation is menstrual blood is unable to come out absolutely normal female hai uterus normal hai lh fsh levels normal hai breast development normal hai pubic hair normal hai right ab please remember that cryptomenorrhea can be due to two causes most common is imperforate hymen and a second cause is transverse vaginal septum transverse vaginal septum now understand jab bhi aapka question kahega tensed bluish bulging hymen it means they are talking about imperforate hymen right so imperforate hymen bhi cause hota hai and transverse vaginal septum is also a cause but also remember suppose if your question is not saying anything they are just saying they are asking you the most common cause of cryptomenorrhea then your answer is imperforate hymen right always the most common cause is imperforate hymen right now look at this question over here which came in your fmg exams a young girl who has not attained menarche complains of cyclical pain in abdomen i told you jaise hi aap ye padhoge cyclical pain in abdomen the first thing which has to come to your mind is cryptomenorrhea and cryptomenorrhea ka most common cause is imperforate hymen next question keh raha hai her breast development is normal just now i told you in cryptomenorrhea breast development will be normal local examination of the genitalia showed the following image so what you are seeing over here tends to bulging hymen it may or may not be blue in color blue in color tab milegi jab blood bahut lambe time tak present hoga right so it may or may not be blue in color and that means we are dealing with imperforate hymen अब इम्परफोरेट हाइमिन का मैनेजमेंट क्या होता है यू हैव टू गिव अ क्रूशिएट इंसिशन ऑन दी हाइमिन यू हैव टू गिव अ क्रूशिएट इंसिशन ऑन दी हाइमिन दैट इज योर मैनेजमेंट फॉर इम्परफोरेट हाइमिन नेक्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इज टाइप्स ऑफ हाइमिन Types of hymen may please see over here. This is how annular hymen or normally ऐसे ही hymen होता है. If you are not getting any opening, there is no opening. Normally hymen में एक opening दिखती है like this. So this is a normal hymen, right? अगर hymen में कोई opening नहीं दिख रही, that means imperforate hymen. अगर आप hymen में ऐसा appearance आ रहा है, that means कि यहां पे एक सेप्टा है हाइमन के बीच में एक सेप्टा है कैन यू सी दिस इज अ सेप्टा इन बिटवीन द हाइमन आई एम रेजिंग सो दैट यू कैन सी इट प्रॉपरली दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सेप्टेट हाइमन अगर छन्नी की तरह सीव लाइक हाइमन मिलेगा देन इट इज क्रिब्री फॉर्म हाइमन सो आई वांट यू टू रिमेंबर ओनली थ्री इमेजेस इम परफोरेट की इमेज सेप्टेट हाइमन की इमेज एंड सीव लाइक हाइमन दैट इज क्रिब्री फ्रॉम हाइमन इमेज दीज थ्री इमेजेस आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर अपकमिंग एग्जाम क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस चलो नाउ नाउ अभी हमने क्या पढ़ा था कि यूट्रस वॉज प्रेजेंट यूट्रस प्रेजेंट था एंड ब्रेस्ट वॉज नॉर्मल प्यूबिक हेयर वॉज नॉर्मल राइट अब हम पढ़ रहे हैं कि योर क्वेश्चन इज सेइंग दैट देयर इज प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया राइट यूट्रस प्रेजेंट है बट ब्रेस्ट एब्सेंट है एंड प्यूबिक हेयर एब्सेंट है अब जब भी क्वेश्चन में ऐसा आएगा कि यूट्रस इज प्रेजेंट बट ब्रेस्ट इज एब्सेंट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर इज एब्सेंट यू हैव टू सी कि क्वेश्चन में एल एच एफ एस एच की वैल्यूज क्या दी है हैव दे गिवन एल एच एफ एस एच डिक्रीज और हैव दे गिवन एल एच एफ एस एच इंक्रीज राइट एबसेंट ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर में दे कैन बी टू कंडीशन एल एच एफ एस एच डिक्रीज एल एच एफ एस एच इंक्रीज अगर क्वेश्चन कह रहा है एल एच एफ एस एच डिक्रीज then there is only one diagnosis and that one diagnosis is kalman syndrome kalman syndrome 
Calvin syndrome is something which is hypothalamic failure. हाइपोथैलेमस फेल कर जाता है एंड जी एन आर एच रिलीज नहीं होता ऑब्वियसली जब जी एन आर एच रिलीज नहीं होगा तो एल एच भी कम होगा एफ एस एच भी कम होगा दैट इज वाई आई एम टेलिंग यू इफ योर क्वेश्चन इज सेंग दैट क्वेकेस इज प्राइमरी एम एन और यूट्रस प्रेजेंट एल एच एफ एस एच डिक्रीज यू ओनली हैव टू थिंक अबाउट वन आंसर एंड दैट इज कैलमन सिंड्रोम अडिशनली क्या दिया होगा क्वेश्चन को थोड़ा सा कॉम्प्लिकेट बनाने के लिए एंड टू गिव यू सम हिंट्स दे आर गोइंग टू से दैट हाइट ऑफ द पेशेंट इज नॉर्मल एंड पेशेंट हैज एन ऑजमिया इन अबिलिटी टू स्मेल राइट एंड जस्ट नाउ आई टोल्ड यू कैलमन सिंड्रोम में देर इज ओनली वन मैनेजमेंट दैट यू हैव टू गिव पल्सटाइल जी एन आर एच That is the management for Kalman syndrome. Pulsatile GnRH. ठीक है. Now comes second situation. Excellent, uh, beta. The gene which is involved in Kalman syndrome is Cal1 gene. But for FMG, I'm sure they're not going to ask you the gene. ठीक है. It's good that you know Cal1 gene, but probably they might not ask this question. Now comes uh, see FMG exam या जो भी ऐसा exam होता है in which you have just you know which is a a kind of a clearing exam where you have to get 50 percent they are going to test your clinical knowledge they want to see कि आपने when you were not when you were doing your under graduation how much clinical knowledge have you obtained they will never test you on theoretical knowledge. they will ask you questions which are related to clinical knowledge right chalo now comes lh and fsh increased ab agar question kehta hai ki primary amenorrhea with uterus present absent breast and pubic hair and lh fsh increased ab lh fsh increased hai to in the question c kya short stature diya hai ya normal stature diya hai If the question is saying short stature, so अब क्या हुआ Your question is saying primary amenorrhea. Question is saying uterus present है breast absent है pubic hair absent है LH FSH increased है height is short. The moment they say LH FSH increased है I know कि I have two things in my mind. Either this is a case of Turner's syndrome or this is a case of Swyer's syndrome. Only two differential diagnoses are there. राइट right? तो अगर शॉर्ट स्टेचर है तो टर्नर सिंड्रोम नॉर्मल हाइट है तो स्वायर्स सिंड्रोम ये दोनों किस चीज के एग्जांपल्स हैं बोथ ऑफ देम आर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ गोनाडल डिसजेनेसिस बोथ ऑफ देम कन कम अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ गोनाडल डिस्टेनेसिस एक में हाइट शॉर्ट है एक में हाइट नॉर्मल है हाइट शॉर्ट है इट मीन्स वी आर डीलिंग विद टर्नर सिंड्रोम वॉट इज द कैरियोटाइप इन टर्नर सिंड्रोम इट इज फोर्टी फाइव एक्स ओ राइट एंड इन टर्नर सिंड्रोम गोनाड्स कैसे होते हैं गोनाड्स आर स्ट्रीक ओवरीज प्लीज रिमेंबर स्ट्रीक ओवरीज शुड नेवर बी रिमूव्ड सो स्ट्रीक ओवरीज कभी मिलिग्नेंट नहीं होती सो दे शुड नेवर बी रिमूव्ड एंड इन अडिशन टू दैट यू विल गेट फीचर्स ऑफ टर्नर सिंड्रोम सो पैथोलॉजी में यू हैव रेड अबाउट फीचर्स ऑफ टर्नर सिंड्रोम लाइक शॉर्ट द लो पोस्टीरियर हेयर लाइन देन वेबिंग ऑफ नेस वेबिंग ऑफ नेक देन शील्ड शेप्ड चेस्ट राइट सैंडल गैप देन सो ऑल दीज फीचर्स किसमें मिलते हैं ऑल दीज फीचर्स यू गेट इन टर्नर्स सिंड्रोम लो पोस्टीरियर हेयर लाइन वेबिंग ऑफ नेक शील्ड शेप्ड चेस्ट राइट वाइडली स्पेस्ड निपल्स क्यूबिटस वैल्गस ऑल दिस वी हैव स्टडीड इन पैथोलॉजी तो अडिशनल फीचर्स ऑफ टर्नर्स सिंड्रोम भी हो सकते हैं सो आई एम रिपीटिंग वेन एवर योर क्वेश्चन सेज यूट्रस प्रेजेंट 
breast absent pubic hair absent lh fsh high and short stature diagnosis is turner syndrome whenever they give you the same findings but they say normal stature it means it is swyers syndrome right swyers syndrome mein what is karyotype it is 46 xy please remember whenever y chromosome is present y chromosome ke short arm mein short arm of y chromosome has s r y gene again very very important question y chromosome has short, the short arm of y chromosome has s r y gene and whenever y chromosome is present gonads will always be testes right and ye jo testes hoti hain in swyers syndrome they are undescended testes right and ye undescended testes they present as bilateral inguinal hernia they present as bilateral inguinal hernia so one very very important thing which you have to remember aapke paas ek female aa rahi hai right you are getting a female who is complaining of primary amenorrhea ya keval ek female hai jo aapke paas bilateral inguinal hernia karke aa rahi hai to all the budding surgeons jab bhi ek female bilateral inguinal hernia karke aaye aapke paas present kare always ask her ki periods kaise hote hain and she will say that there is primary amenorrhea this means ki ye phenotypically appearance wise female hai but actually her karyotype is 46 xy bilateral inguinal hernia ka matlab hai ki they are undescended testes and iska matlab hai ki karyotype 46 xy to jahan kahin bhi hame question mein bilateral inguinal hernia dikhega i know ki they are talking about 46 xy karyotype and that means ye bilateral inguinal hernia nahi hai they are undescended testes and jab bhi undescended testes hoti hain they always should be removed because there are increased chances of malignancy right तो बायोलेट्रल इंग्वाइनल हर्निया स्वायर्स सिंड्रोम में भी मिलता है एंड एंड्रोजन इनसेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम में भी मिलता है एंड्रोजन इनसेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम अभी आ रहा है राइट आई विल जस्ट नाउ टेल यू कि हाउ डज अ पेशेंट ऑफ एंड्रोजन इनसेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम प्रेजेंट टू यू बट स्वायर्स सिंड्रोम का पेशेंट कैसे प्रेजेंट करेगा स्वायर्स सिंड्रोम में पेशेंट विल हैव प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया यूट्रस विल बी प्रेजेंट breast will be absent pubic hair will be absent and lh fsh levels will be high height of the patient will be normal clear to all of you so swyer syndrome ke patient mein these are the things you are going to get question mein kahin na kahin mention zarur hoga that there is bilateral inguinal hernia jo ki immediately hame bata dega we are dealing with 46 xy karyotype clear to all of you yes okay and always they should be removed because they have increased chances of malignancy kaun si malignancy the most common malignancy is the most common tumor is gonadoblastoma right okay abhi tak hum un primary amenorrhea ke cases ke bare mein padh rahe the to sabse pehle we had studied primary amenorrhea jisme uterus present tha and breast and pubic hair normal the देन हमने पढ़ा प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया जिसमें यूट्रस प्रेजेंट है बट ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर एब्सेंट थे नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया जिसमें यूट्रस एब्सेंट है अब जब भी ऐसा क्वेश्चन आएगा वेन एवर यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अ क्वेश्चन विच सेज दैट देर इज प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया विद यूट्रस एब्सेंट यू हैव टू जस्ट सी कि ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर कैसा दिया है if they are saying both breast and pubic hair are well developed very very important 
दोनों ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूपिक हेयर आर वेल डिवेलप्ड इट मीन्स दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मुलेरियन ए जेनेसिस मुलेरियन ए जेनेसिस जिसका दूसरा नेम इज एम आर के एच सिंड्रोम दिस इज फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स एक्स बट इफ द सेम क्वेश्चन कम्स दैट प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया विद यूट्रस एबसेंट and they are saying breast is well developed but pubic hair is not well developed then there is only one possibility and that is androgen insensitivity syndrome in androgen insensitivity syndrome they are 46 xy additionally question hame kya batayega additionally question hame ye batayega that they are coming to you with bilateral inguinal hernia right they can also say a small blind vagina is present same thing they can say over here also small blind vagina yahan pe renal anomalies एडिशनल फीचर इज रीनल नॉमलीज बट डायग्नोसिस कैसे बनाएंगे डायग्नोसिस बनाने के लिए ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर ब्रेस्ट एंड प्यूबिक हेयर बोथ आर वेल डिवेलप्ड इन मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस ब्रेस्ट इज वेल डिवेलप्ड एंड प्यूबिक हेयर इज नॉट वेल डिवेलप्ड इन एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम प्लीज रिमेंबर इसको कहने का देर इज अनदर वे they can say breast corresponds to tanner stage 4 or 5 the moment they say breast corresponds to tanner stage 4 or 5 iska matlab well developed and pubic hair ke liye they can say tanner stage 1 or 2 the moment they say tanner stage 1 or 2 it means it is less developed right अब नाउ यू आर सेइंग रजीका वी नीड टू रूल आउट स्वायर्स बेटा स्वायर्स में तो यूट्रस प्रेजेंट होता है ना स्वायर्स में यूट्रस इज प्रेजेंट एंड ना तो ब्रेस्ट होता है ना प्यूबिक हेयर होता है एंड्रोजन इनसेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम में यूट्रस इज एब्सेंट एंड ब्रेस्ट वेल डेवलप्ड होगा एंड प्यूबिक हेयर विल नॉट बी वेल डिवेलप्ड हैव यू अंडरस्टूड तो बहुत इजी है दोनों में डिफ्रेंशिएट करना यूट्रस एब्सेंट है तो इट हैज टू बी एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम यूट्रस प्रेजेंट है तो इट हैज टू बी स्वायर्स सिंड्रोम सो इफ योर क्वेश्चन इज सेइंग आई मेक इट मोर सिंपलर फॉर यू इफ योर क्वेश्चन सेज बाय लेटरल इंग्वाइनल हर्निया प्लस प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया एंड क्वेश्चन कहता है यूट्रस प्रेजेंट इट मीन्स इट इज स्वायर्स क्वेश्चन कहता है यूट्रस एबसेंट इट मीन्स इट इज एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम क्लियर अब नहीं भूलोगे ग्रेट नाउ लेट अस सी कि इन योर क्वेश्चन इन योर एग्जाम्स वॉट ऑल क्वेश्चन हैव बीन आस्ड राइट सो वन इज दिस क्वेश्चन इमेज देखते ही हमें समझ में आ गया दैट दिस इमेज इज ऑफ इम परफोरेट हाइमेन क्वेश्चन क्या कह रहा है सिक्सटीन ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल विजिट्स गाइनी ओपडी विथ कंप्लेन ऑफ साइक्लिकल पेन इन अबडोमिन जैसे ही साइक्लिकल पेन इन अबडोमिन आया आई एम थिंकिंग अबाउट इम परफोरेट हाइमेन राइट हर जनरल एग्जामिनेशन शोज नॉर्मल ब्रेस्ट नॉर्मल प्यूबिक हेयर लोकल एग्जामिनेशन शोज ब्लूएश बल्जिंग हाइमेन right on per rectal examination uterus is palpable the most appropriate management so you all know what is the most appropriate management excellent cruciate incision on the hymen chalo next question dekhte hain a mother this is your fmg june 2021 so a mother is bringing 18 year old daughter to opd who has not attained menarche 18 years not attained menarche FSH normal, LH normal, right? Pubic hair are normal and breast development normal, right? Ultrasound shows absent uterus, blind vagina. 
अब हमें सोचना है एब्सेंट यूट्रस में मैम ने दो कंडीशन बताई थी इधर इट हैज टू बी मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस या एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम देन मैम ने हमें यह भी कहा था कि इन एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी सिंड्रोम ब्रेस्ट तो वेल डेवलप्ड होंगे बट प्यूबिक हेयर विल नॉट बी वेल डेवलप्ड जबकि इन मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस ब्रेस्ट विल बी वेल डेवलप्ड एंड प्यूबिक हेयर विल बी वेल डेवलप्ड सो प्रॉबेबली दिस इज मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस आगे उन्होंने दे ही दिया कैरियोटाइप फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स एक्स दे हैव मेड द क्वेश्चन सो सिंपल इट मीन्स दिस इज मुलेरियन ए जेनेसिस जैसे ही इन्होंने दिया कैरियोटाइप फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स एक्स इट कैन नॉट बी टर्नर सिंड्रोम बिकॉज इट इज फोर्टी फाइव एक्स ओ इट कैन नॉट बी एंड्रोजन इन सेंसिटिविटी बिकॉज इट इज फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स वाई इट कैन नॉट बी स्वायर्स बिकॉज इट इज फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स वाई राइट सो इट हैज टू बी मुलेरियन विच इज फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स एक्स हैव यू अंडरस्टूड ऑल ऑफ यू एंड टू कंफ्यूज यू ऑल हमेशा ऐसे एफ एस एच एल एच देंगे ही देंगे अब एक चीज और याद रखना इन केस ऑफ मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस एफ एस एच एंड एल एच बोथ आर नॉर्मल एफ एस एच एल एच बोथ आर नॉर्मल इन मुलेरियन एजेनेसिस क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस चलो Now coming to secondary amenorrhea. Similar manner me, let us see that secondary amenorrhea me how questions are asked and how we are going to come to a diagnosis. So the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea is pregnancy. That's a question. That is why the first test. which you should do whenever a patient comes to you with secondary amenorrhea is urine pregnancy test right okay now in case of pregnancy estrogen levels are high and progesterone levels are high because estrogen and progesterone levels are high estrogen will have a negative feedback on fsh and mostly estrogen का नेगेटिव फीडबैक होता है एफएसएच पे एंड मोस्टली प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन का नेगेटिव फीडबैक होता है ऑन एलएच ऑल दो बोथ ऑफ देम एक्ट ऑन बोथ ऑफ देम बट जनरली ईस्ट्रोजन इज सेट टू एक्ट ऑन एफएसएच टू ब्रिंग अ नेगेटिव फीडबैक राइट एंड प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन इज अ सेट टू एक्ट ऑन एलएच टू ब्रिंग अ नेगेटिव फीडबैक तो ऑब्वियसली ईस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन हाई है तो एलएच एंड एफएसएच बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी लो इन प्रेगनेंसी जब भी वो हमें प्रेगनेंसी बताएंगे तो दे आर गोइंग टू टेल अस कि यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट इज पॉजिटिव एंड दे आर आल्सो गोइंग टू गिव यू सम सिम्टम्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी राइट सो देन आई कम टू नो ओके आई एम डीलिंग दिस सेकेंडरी एमेनोरिया इज बिकॉज ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी नाउ अ सेकेंड कॉज ऑफ सेकेंडरी एमेनोरिया इज कि फीमेल हैज बिकम मेनोपॉजल एट एन अर्ली एज right that is what is called as premature menopause and premature menopause ka ek fancy name hota hai and this is the name which is being used these days and that is premature primary ovarian insufficiency sorry primary ovarian insufficiency p o i poi is nothing it simply means when menopause is happening at less than 40 years so menopause at less than 40 years so jab bhi menopause happens less than 40 years mein that is premature menopause and that is it has got a fancy name which is called as primary ovarian insufficiency ab primary ovarian insufficiency mein ya premature menopause mein there are no more follicles in the ovary to so, no granulosa cells no theca cells no granulosa cells no theca cells means no estrogen no progesterone and if no estrogen no progesterone what will happen the negative feedback on lh and fsh will be gone so lh and fsh will be high to jab bhi ye premature menopause ki baat hogi in premature menopause always the levels of fsh are high right एंड कितने हाई मिलते हैं दे आर मोर देन फोर्टी फाइव इंटरनेशनल यूनिट्स क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस फोर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव इंटरनेशनल यूनिट्स के से ज्यादा होता है लेवल्स ऑफ एफ एस एच सो यू कैन राइट इट एज फोर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव राइट 
सो so, जब भी वो ये कहें सेकेंडरी ए मेनोर या विद एफ एस एच लेवल हाई एक ही कंडीशन होती है सेकेंडरी ए मेनोर या विद इंक्रीज एफ एस एच इज सीन ओनली इन वन कंडीशन एंड दैट इज प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज इज दिस क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू द मोमेंट यू गेट अ क्वेश्चन सेकेंडरी ए मेनोर या विद इंक्रीज एफ एस एच कुछ और नहीं सोचोगे यू आर गोइंग टू मार्क दी आंसर एज प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज अब एक और कंडीशन होती है विच कैन लीड टू सेकेंडरी एमेनोरिया एंड दैट इज पीसीओएस पीसीओएस में क्या होता है इन पीसीओएस देर इज एन ओव्यूलेशन अ फीमेल इज नॉट ओव्यूलेटिंग बिकॉज अ फीमेल इज नॉट ओव्यूलेटिंग व्हाट हैपेंस टू द लेवल्स ऑफ प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन दे विल बी डिक्रीज एंड बिकॉज प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन इज डिक्रीज the negative feedback on lh is gone so lh levels are high estrogen is normal fsh is normal so in pcos fsh normal hota hai but lh levels are high right now additional feature wo kya denge they will give additional feature as hirsutism so in pcos fsh is normal lh levels are high right that is why i told you fsh high hai it means it is menopause right fsh or kisi condition mein high nahi hota pcos mein bhi fsh normal lehta hai lh high hota hai jo lh is to fsh ratio hai wo pcos mein 2 is to 1 ya 3 is to 1 ho jata hai right then another condition which can lead another condition so ek hi condition hai jisme lh will be high and fsh will be normal right normally ya to dono lh fsh high milte hain ya dono lh fsh low milte hain pcos ki condition mein fsh normal milta hai but lh high milta hai clear to all of you yes now then comes another condition which can lead to secondary amenorrhea and that is prolactinoma what is a prolactinoma prolactinoma is a prolactin secreting pituitary tumor and just now i told you that whenever the levels of prolactin are high it will decrease lh and decrease fsh so fsh lh decreased hai it means it is it could be prolactinoma ab could be prolactinoma ka kya matlab hai baki cheeze kya di hongi questions mein that i am going to say i am dealing with a case of prolactinoma your question will say that patient is having secondary amenorrhea with headache visual disturbances and galactoria headache kyu ho raha hai kyunki ye pituitary ka tumor hai right that is why headache ho raha hai pituitary ke as nearby structures are optic chiasma that is why visual disturbances ho rahe hain and we all know that prolactin leads to galactoria so if your question is saying there is secondary amenorrhea with headache visual disturbances and galactoria lh fsh levels are decreased it means they are talking about prolactinoma remember i am again repeating there is only one condition jisme secondary amenorrhea hoga and lh and fsh both are high that one condition is premature menopause there is only one condition jisme secondary amenorrhea hoga fsh normal hoga lekin lh high hoga and that is pcos in a case of prolactinoma you are going to get decreased lh decreased fsh along with headache visual disturbances and galactoria now if they ask you what is the drug of choice for increased prolactin what is the drug of choice for increased prolactin cabergolin do not say bromocriptan the drug of choice is cabergolin now another reason for secondary amenorrhea is sheehan syndrome what happens in sheehan syndrome there is necrosis of the anterior pituitary gland so common sense tells me 
जब एंटीरियर पिट्यूटरी ग्लैंड है ही नहीं तो वॉट विल हैपन टू एल एच एंड एफ एस एच दे विल डिक्रीज राइट अब यू विल से मैम प्रोलैक्टिनोमा में भी एल एच एफ एस एच डिक्रीज था यहां पर भी डिक्रीज है हाउ एम आई गोइंग टू डिसाइड वेदर आई एम डीलिंग विद प्रोलैक्टिनोमा और शी हैंड सिंड्रोम बेस्ड ऑन सिम्टम्स प्रोलैक्टिनोमा की पेशेंट कंप्लेन करेगी हेड एक विजुअल डिस्टर्बेंसेज एंड गेलेक्टोरिया की शी हैंड सिंड्रोम की पेशेंट हिस्ट्री देगी कि शी हैड पीपीएच एंड आफ्टर डिलीवरी शी वॉज अनेबल टू लैक्टेट हर बेबी सो इफ दिस हिस्ट्री इज प्रेजेंट दैट देर इज पीपीएच एंड देर इज फेलियर टू लैक्टेट द बेबी देन यू आर गोइंग टू से दैट इट इज अ केस ऑफ शी हैंड सिंड्रोम क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू अक्षित Right, right. If I'm reading it correctly, Akshit, beta, whenever a prolactinoma happens in pregnancy, you don't give any treatment unless and until visual disturbances are present. Pre- prolactinoma is not treated during pregnancy. Okay. And the last condition could be Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome me. there are intrauterine additions which are present or intrauterine synechia which are present baki hypothalamus normal hai pituitary normal hai ovary normal hai keval uterus mein problem hai ki uterus ke andar additions present hai that is why lh is normal fsh is normal estrogen is normal right so whenever lh fsh and estrogen are normal and your patient has secondary amenorrhea it is a case of asherman syndrome history mein kya milega there will be history of post partum curettage or history of excessive curettage history of excessive curettage ya post partum curettage clear to all of you yes secondary amenorrhea mein samajh mein aa gaya so i'm quickly recapping it for you secondary amenorrhea ke patient mein agar fsh increased hai lh increased hai it has to be premature menopause lh increased hai fsh normal hai pcos right lh decreased hai fsh decreased hai and patient is complaining of visual disturbances headache and galactoria that is prolactinoma lh decreased hai fsh decreased hai patient is saying she has history of pph and she did not she was unable to feed her baby she had syndrome lh normal hai fsh normal hai and your question is saying ki patient has history of excessive dnc is being done especially in the postpartum period that means it is asherman syndrome clear to all of you now look at the questions which were asked Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? So tell which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? A, B, C, and D. Is me both C and D are wrong. C be nahi hai cause. D be nahi hai cause. Both of them are incorrect, and that is why this could be a wrong recall question also. Ya ho sakta hai ye multiple choice question diya ho. Which of the following is not a cause? Pucha hai beta. So it is both C and D. Ab suppose yehi question aaya tha. So in this case, what are you going to mark the answer? Better answer to mark is Turner's syndrome. But ideally, I believe that your options are wrong, and C and D both are not causes of secondary amenorrhea. Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of secondary amenorrhea? Now, question number three: Which of the following is not a cause of is decreased and what happens to estrogen so tell me what will happen agar lh decreased hai fsh decreased hai what will happen to estrogen estrogen will also be decreased pcos mein kya milta hai pcos mein you get lh levels are high 
FSH is normal ya decreased and estrogen is normal ya decreased, right? And okay, one second, one second, one second, one second. This is here. Normal in this case, okay. Premature ovarian failure mein kya milega? Premature ovarian failure mein LH and FSH both will be high and estrogen will be decreased. Right? So, 1 ka B, 2 ka A, 4 ka C, 3 ka D. Right? Ab yaha pe inho ne what they have given is ki PCOS ke patient mein they have said FSH and LH estrogen are decreased. Ideally FSH and estrogen are normal. But hum, hum kaise dekh rahe hain ki this is PCOS because they are saying LH is high. The moment they say keval LH high, I know it is PCOS. When both LH and FSH are high, when both LH and FSH are high, it has to be premature ovarian failure. Clear to all of you? Yes? Chalo. See, look at this question. A 25-year-old female attends gynae OPD with secondary amenorrhea. She has history of previous DNC. The moment they say previous DNC, I am thinking about Asherman syndrome. Then they are saying FSH is 6 international units. Normally FSH kitta hota hai? Normally FSH hota hai between 1 to 10. It means FSH levels are normal. If FSH is 6, it means it is normal. So, they are saying FSH is 6. That means FSH is normal. History of DNC and FSH normals. It means it is Asherman syndrome. Have you all understood how you are going to answer questions? Okay, all of you. Now, coming to some syndromes in Gaini, just may we have to do PCOS first. Now, PCOS may, there are three things, three important criteria in PCOS. Number one, if a female is coming to you with complaints of hirsutism or if there are increased testosterone levels. Right? So, if a female complains of hirsutism or if there are increased testosterone levels. Right, testosterone levels kitne ho more than 70 but less than 200. Right, number two, female is coming to you with irregular cycles or oligomenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea plus ultrasound pay. I am getting 12 or more follicles which are 2 to 9 millimeters in size in one or either of the ovary and volume of the ovary is more than equal to 10 cc. Right? So, I am telling you three things. Whenever your question says that there is a female who's come to you with hirsutism, number one, or her androgen levels are high, and they are saying she is complaining of either irregular cycles or oligomenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea. And the question says that on ultrasound, you are getting more than equal to 12 follicles, 2 to 9 millimeters in size and the wall or the volume of the ovary is more than 10 cc. If any two of the above three are present, this is Rotterdam criteria. This is Rotterdam. Any two of the above three should be present. And this is what is Rotterdam criteria for diagnosis of PCOS. Right? So, Rotterdam kata out of these three, any two should be present. Please remember, generally, generally, these follicles are arranged around the periphery of the ovary. Generally, the follicles are arranged around the periphery of the ovary. Generally, follicles are seen around periphery of the ovary, giving it a necklace appearance. Giving it a necklace appearance. Right? 
please remember that following features are seen in PCOS but they are not a diagnostic criteria right diagnostic criteria are only these three and from these three any two should be present to say that the patient has PCOS right and what are not a diagnostic criteria ye features hain PCOS mein generally females are obese PCOS mein you get insulin resistance PCOS mein LH is to FSH ratio becomes 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 PCOS may patients come to you with complaint of infertility and this infertility is due to an ovulation right but all these are features of PCOS they are not a diagnostic criteria diagnostic criteria are only the three criteria which just now we have quickly revised samajh mein aaya now, whenever a patient of PCOS comes to you, the first step in management of PCOS is weight reduction. Always, chai wo infertility ke liye aari hai, chai wo hirsutism ke liye aari hai, first step is weight reduction. Now, ab agar aapka question, simple sa question pooche, they are not telling you ki hirsutism ki drug of choice, they are not telling you infertility, they are simply saying, what is the drug of choice in PCOS? If you get a question like this, what is the drug of choice in PCOS? Your answer has to be OCP. OCPs are the drug of choice in PCOS, right? Now comes specific question. They ask you, what is the drug of choice for infertility in PCOS? Please remember, pehle drug of choice dene se pehle first step kya karenge? Weight reduction. Before I tell her to start with any drugs, I am going to advise her weight reduction. Haan, but the drug of choice is letrozole. What is the drug of choice? Letrozole. What is the second drug of choice? Clomiphene citrate. Both these are first line drugs. Drug of choice is letrozole. Second drug of choice is clomiphene citrate. Second line mein, second line mein ek drug aata hai and ek procedure aata hai. Drug is HMG. What is HMG? Human menopausal gonadotropin. Human menopausal gonadotropin. And second line mein ek procedure aata hai which is laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Laparoscopic ovarian drilling, se likh dhu, otherwise I don't know what you guys are going to write. Drilling. Laparoscopic ovarian drilling. So first line drugs may we have first drug of choice as letrozole, second drug of choice as clomiphen. Second line may we have a drug that is HMG and a procedure that is laparoscopic ovarian drilling. So in your FMG, this was question was asked, laparoscopic ovarian drilling is done for which condition? So laparoscopic ovarian drilling is done for which condition? Quickly tell me. It is done for PCOS. Is that clear to all of you? Yes. Laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Now, now if they ask what is the most common complication of Clomiphene citrate. What is the most common complication of clomiphene citrate? The most common complication of clomiphene citrate. Chaldi se batao. Who's going to tell me? The most common complication of clomiphene citrate. I think there is a lot of lag in the video. So what is the most common complication? Is anyone going to tell me? It is not OHSS, Dr. Tanuja, no bacha, no Dr. Ripali. It is not OHSS. Excellent Shah Faisal. It is hot flashes. Hot flashes. That is the most common complication of clomiphen citrate. Jitne log OHSS bol rahe hai, sab galat hai. OHSS most commonly kiske saath milta hai? Most common drug causing OHSS. What is the most common drug causing OHSS? It is HMG. 
most common drug causing OHSS is HMG. Right? Number one. Number two, if someone asks you what is the triggering factor for OHSS? Triggering factor for OHSS is injection HCG. Triggering factor for OHSS is injection HCG. I was asking you what is the most common complication of clomiphen citrate? It is hot flashes. Samaj me aya? Right? Now tell me what is the drug of choice for irregular cycles? Drug of choice for irregular cycles is again OCP. Fir agar wo puchhe, what is the drug of choice for hirsutism? The drug of choice for hirsutism again is OCP. That is why I said ki agar koi humse puchhe ga drug of choice for PCOS in general, my answer is going to be OCP. In fertility, it is letrozole or it is second drug of choice was clomiphen. Now, in hirsutism ke patient, if OCPs fail, kar gai, so you have to give OCPs for 6 months. And if OCPs fail, then you have to give spironolactone. Then you have to give spironolactone. Please remember, spironolactone should never be given to a female if she wants to conceive. Right? So, in that case, I will never be giving spironolactone. Hirsutism ke liye last resort kya hai? So, abhi humne just padha tha ki if you are giving continuous GnRH, that can treat hirsutism. Right? So, hirsutism ka treatment hota hai First drug of choice is OCPs. OCPs work nahi karenge. I will then give spironolactone. And last resort is continuous GnRH. Now tell me a drug which leads to hirsutism. Kaun si aisi drug hai jiska side effect hirsutism hota hai? The answer is Danazol. Danazol. Right? So, question kaise aayega? Question aise aayega? They are going to say all of the following drugs can be used for managing hirsutism except. Us except ka answer is always going to be danazol. Why? Because danazol leads to hirsutism. That is why danazol can never be used to manage hirsutism. Is this clear to all of you? So, a drug which can lead to hirsutism. Someone has written minoxidil. Minoxidil doesn't lead to hirsutism. Minoxidil leads to hair growth. Hirsutism is not hair growth. Hirsutism is growth of hair in male pattern. That is around the lips, around the chin. Right? Okay. Now, next. This was again one of your questions which was asked in FMG. Jitne questions when is lagaye hain, all of them are your previous year FMG questions. Right? Which of the following is not used to treat PCOD or PCOS? So, abhi humne padha, clomiphen citrate use hota hai. Why? In case of, in case of uh, infertility. Metformin use hoga PCOS mein? Yes, because it is the drug of choice for insulin resistance. OCPs, yes, it is the drug of choice for hirsutism. Hirsutism ke case mein, irregular cycles ke case mein. What is not used is tamoxifen. You don't use tamoxifen for management of hirsutism, uh, for management of PCOS. Ab a question jo tamoxifen pe aur aata hai. And this was a question which was asked in your exams. Tamoxifen can lead to, if a female is using tamoxifen, what can it lead to? It can lead to endometrial cancer. Very, very important question. So, tamoxifen is one of the risk factors for endometrial cancer. Right? Have you understood? Now, look at these two ultrasounds. Both these ultrasounds are asked in your exams. Compare them. Jo ultrasound A hai, isme what are you seeing? In ultrasound A, you are seeing that there are follicles which are arranged around the periphery. And these follicles are small follicles. They are roughly 2 to 9 millimeters in size. 
right and that is why this is an ultrasound of pcos on the other hand jo hame uh, ultrasound b dikh raha hai isme i am seeing big follicles now when you are seeing big follicles it means this is ohss ohss as i told you ohss is because of most commonly it is because of hmg have you understood and triggering factor kya hota hai ohss ka triggering factor for ohss is injection hcg clear to all of you yes bachcho okay now look over here this was a question which was asked in fmg june 2022 a patient with best cancer treatment with tamoxifen she now presents with complaints of bleeding per vagina what is the most likely cause tell me tamoxifen ka use leads to so what is what does the use of tamoxifen lead to just now we did it leads to the use it leads to endometrial cancer right so the answer over here is option a yes perfect chalo so i was doing syndromes with you and sabse pehla syndrome humne padha pcos pcos what is the other name for pcos steen leventhal syndrome right now let us see the next syndrome which you need to know and that is ashermann syndrome ashermann syndrome mein the problem is that there are intrauterine additions plus there is a defective endometrium right now uh sha fazel a uh, beta ohss may the the management is that you have to if it is a mild grade ohss then in that case you have to advise rest to your patient because usko pain in abdomen ho raha hoga so you are going to give her some analgesics vomiting ho rahi hai to usko anti emetics doge and agar moderate to severe ohss hai to us patient ko aap admit karoge because severe ohss mein there are increased chances of dic also right to ohss ke patient agar moderate to severe ohss hai you are going to admit her you are going to give her iv fluids you are going to give her heparin so that usko dic na ho right so you, i don't think so they are going to ask you management of ohss that is restrict that should be reserved for neat pg ठीक है नाउ इफ दे आस्क यू व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज फॉर एशरमैन सिंड्रोम मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज फॉर एशरमैन सिंड्रोम इज एक्सेसिव क्यूरिटाज वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग एक्सेसिव क्यूरिटाज दैट कैन लीड टू एशरमैन सिंड्रोम हाईएस्ट रिस्क इज व्हेन यू हैव डन अ पोस्ट पार्टम क्यूरिटाज if you have done curettage in the postpartum period tell me one infection which can cause ashermann syndrome so ashermann syndrome can also be because of genital tb clear now what is the most common symptom in ashermann syndrome please yaad rakhna most common symptom is infertility right infertility infertility agar nahi diya hai then secondary amenorrhea and wo bhi nahi diya hai then hypomenorrhea that means decreased bleeding tick what is the screening test for ashermann syndrome screening test for ashermann syndrome is hsg what does hsg stand for hysterosalpingography what is the investigation of choice in ashermann syndrome it is hysteroscopy because hysteroscopy is diagnostic as well as therapeutic aap jab hysteroscopy karoge sath ke sath you are going to do adhesio lysis you will cut the additions so that is why hysteroscopy is the investigation of choice it is diagnostic plus therapeutic so you will do hysteroscopic adhesio lysis hysteroscopic adhesio lysis right 
okay then important points which you know need to know on hsg hsg pe bahut sare questions aate hain so some important points which you need to know on hsg as i told you in case of asherman syndrome the screening test is hsg the investigation of choice is hysteroscopy asherman syndrome mein i told you fsh is normal lh is normal estrogen is normal right chalo hsg pe kahan se questions aate hain so number 1 hsg is investigation of choice for knowing whether the fallopian tubes are patent or not number 1 नंबर टू क्वेश्चन आता है कि एच कौन से डे पे करते हैं इट हैज टू बी डन बिटवीन डे सेवन टू डे टेन ऑफ द साइकिल एच एस जी इज ऑलवेज डन बिटवीन डे सेवन टू डे टेन ऑफ द साइकिल एच एस जी इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन पेशेंट्स विद हु हैव प्रेगनेंसी ऑब्वियसली हम डाई नहीं डालेंगे इन अ पेशेंट हु हैज प्रेगनेंसी neither it has to be given to patients who have pid or genital tb because agar pid or genital tb hai jab aap dye daloge and when the dye is going to come out from the tubes the infection will spread so in infections also we are not going to do hsg that means in pid and genital tb the instrument which is used for doing uh, hsg is a leech Wilkinson cannula. This name you have to know. Leach Wilkinson W. This is W. Leach Wilkinson cannula, right? Leach Wilkinson cannula. This is how it looks. It will have a funnel-shaped tip with transverse serrations like this. So a funnel-shaped tip with transverse serrations, and it will be like this. so whenever you are getting a funnel shaped tip cannula it means it is a leach wilkinson cannula right these were the important points on hsg ab jab hum hsg karte hain in case of asherman syndrome so basically hsg mein karte kya hai in hsg so if this over here is the uterus if this is the uterus HSG में क्या करेंगे इन एच एस जी आई विल टेक अ कैनुला एंड थ्रू दिस कैनुला आई विल पास अ रेडियो ओपेक डाई आई विल पास अ रेडियो ओपेक डाई एंड देन आई विल सी वेदर द डाई इज कमिंग आउट और नॉट राइट दैट इज वॉट यू डू एंड देन आई डू एक्सरेज टू सी वेदर द डाई हैज कम आउट और नॉट राइट दिस इज वॉट यू डू इन एच एस जी यू आर पासिंग अ रेडियो पेक डाई एंड देन यू आर डूइंग एक्सरेज एंड यू आर सींग वेदर द डाई कम्स आउट और नॉट ना इन केस ऑफ एशर मैन सिंड्रोम जब आप एच एस जी करोगे वेन यू आर गोइंग टू डू एच एस जी इन एशर मैन सिंड्रोम इमेजिन अंदर बहुत सारे एडिशन है राइट देर आर एडिशन अब जहां कहीं भी एडिशन होगा वहां पे डाई विल नॉट गो right so the dye is not going to go at those places where additions are present that is why you are going to get multiple filling defects these filling defects will be irregular and this will give a moth eaten appearance so in asherman syndrome in hsgs you are going to get multiple filling defects which will be irregular and you are going to get a moth eaten appearance now the dye someone is asking me ki dye kaun si use karte hain you use urographin urographin this is a radio opaque iodinated dye a radio opaque iodinated dye right so this is the kind of appearance which you are going to get in asherman syndrome as you can see i am getting multiple filling defects and these filling defects are irregular so this is the picture which you are going to get in asherman syndrome and procedure kya kar rahe ho this procedure is hsg clear now this was a question which was asked acha chalo uske bhi now in contrast to this agar fibroid hoga ya polyp hoga 
यूट्रस के अंदर स्टिल हमें फिलिंग डिफेक्ट मिलेगा बट दैट फिलिंग डिफेक्ट विल बी अ सिंगल फिलिंग डिफेक्ट एंड इट विल बी अ वेरी स्मूथ फिलिंग डिफेक्ट सो इफ देर विल बी अ फाइब्रॉइड और अ पॉलिप देन ऑन एच एस जी यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अ स्मूथ फिलिंग डिफेक्ट अ सिंगल स्मूथ फिलिंग डिफेक्ट एंड दैट इज द एच एस जी ऑफ अ फाइब्रॉइड और अ पॉलिप हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस येस अब इन योर एग्जाम्स दीज वर द टू क्वेश्चन विच दे हैड आस्ट नंबर वन दे हैड आस्ट दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज यूज फॉर सो यू टेल मी दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज यूज फॉर हिस्ट्रो सैल्पिंगोग्राफी वॉट इज दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज लीच विल्किसन कैनुला राइट क्लियर ना then they asked identify the image so obviously this is an hst and what i am seeing is irregular filling defect now because i am getting an irregular filling defect it means that this is asher man syndrome filling defect mil raha hai so it has to be either asher man ya fibroid ya polyp and smooth filling defect hai so it has to be fibroid irregular hai so it has to be fibroid ya polyp if it is smooth and if it is irregular it has to be asherman syndrome clear this is not a normal hsg normal hsg mein kabhi bhi filling defect nahi dikhai dega clear now please understand that jab bhi hame dekhna hai ki tubes patent hai ki nahi hai the investigation of choice is hsg For tubal patency, the investigation of choice is HSG. But then it is not the gold standard. Gold standard is कि हमने this is the abdomen, this is the uterus. Gold standard is कि नीचे से आप dye pass करो, right? So you pass a dye from below. एंड ऊपर से एक लैप्रोस्कोप से देखो वेदर द डाई इज कमिंग आउट और नॉट एंड दिस इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज लैप्रोस्कोपिक क्रोमोपर्ट्यूबेशन लैप्रोस्कोपिक क्रोमोपर्ट्यूबेशन राइट सो द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड मेथड फॉर ट्यूबल पेटेंसी ट्यूबल पेटेंसी का इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इज एच एस जी and gold standard is laparoscopic chromoperturbation now they ask you which is the dye which you are going to pass in this case so the dye which is used for laparoscopic chromoperturbation what is that dye who is going to tell me answer this question this is your previous year question A, B, C, or D. A is saline. B is gentian violet. C is carbon dioxide, and D is methylene blue. All of you are saying it is uh, methylene blue. Everyone. I am not going to answer this question abhi because I am just going to check and tell you because all of you are saying methylene blue so I am going to first check and then I am going to tell you ki laparoscopic chromoperturbation mein what is the dye Yes it is methylene blue dye yes and if methylene blue is not available then it is gentian violet this was the confusion which i had so gentian violet is not the answer of choice the dye of choice is methylene blue if methylene blue is not available then we go for gentian violet right so it has to be methylene blue dye uh, i will still confirm it because i don't know why i am getting this gentian violet always in my mind So why is gentian violet coming to my mind? I don't know.
वन ऑफ देम इज फर्स्ट चॉइस द अदर वन इज सेकेंड चॉइस हाँ इट इज मिथलीन ब्लू सेकेंड चॉइस इज जेंशन वॉलेट सो द आंसर इज येस आई गॉट एंग्जाइटी फॉर वन मिनट दैट आई एम थिंकिंग इट इज जेंशन वॉलेट एंड दीज पीपल आर सेंग इट इज मिथलीन ब्लू दिस हैपन्स चलो ठीक है सो इट इज मिथलीन ब्लू ओके अब नाउ कमिंग टू एच एस जी इमेजेस दो और एच एस जी इमेजेस आर इंपॉर्टेंट वन इज वेर यू आर सींग that there is a blockage in the tube right so there can be blockages at two places number one is when the dye see this is leach wilkinson cannula dye has gone here dye cornual end tak gayi and beyond the cornua the dye hasn't gone right so this is an hsg with a bilateral cornual block now whenever they give you this hsg and they ask you what is the most common cause of this that the dye has gone on gone only up till the proximal end of the tube normally dye should have gone inside the tubes also but yahan pe i can see that the uh, dye has gone only up till the proximal end of the tube beta this is not uniconvoate uterus uniconvoate uterus may you get a banana shaped uterus and one fallopian tube राइट दैट इज अनिकॉन्वेट यूट्रस यहां पर हमें क्या दिख रहा है यहां पर आई एम सींग दैट द डाय हैज गॉन इन साइड द यूट्रस बट डाय एंगल ऑफ यूट्रस के आगे नहीं गई दैट मीन्स दिस इज अ केस ऑफ बायोलेट्रल कॉर्नुअल ब्लॉक एंड इफ दे आस्क यू वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ बायोलेट्रल कॉर्नुअल ब्लॉक इट इज फिजियोलॉजिकल स्पैज राइट मोस्ट कॉमन पैथोलॉजिकल कॉज इज जेनाइटल टीबी If they say that what is the next step? Next step always. जब भी हमें block मिलेगा next step will be hysteroscopy and laparoscopy. क्या करोगे Hysteroscopy and laparoscopy. Most of the times, जब आप hysteroscopy and laparoscopy करोगे तो जो भी ये spasm होगा that is going to get relieved. If the spasm is not getting relieved and if the block persists, then the management is IVF. So these are all the questions which they ask you when they show you this HSG. Number one, this HSG is showing you bilateral cornual block. Number two, most common cause is physiological spasm. Number three, the most common pathological cause is genital TB. नंबर फोर अगर ऐसा एच एस जी मिल रहा है वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड लैप्रोस्कोपिक क्रोमो पर्टिवेशन सो अंदर से भी डाल रहे हैं एक वायर एंड ऊपर से वी आर सींग की लैप्रोस्कोपी से द डाई इज कमिंग आउट और नॉट एंड हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी के साथ साथ हम एक वायर भी डालते हैं ताकि जो भी स्पैज हो दैट गेट्स रिलीव सो हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड लैप्रोस्कोपी दैट इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी इन योर ऑप्शन दैट इफ देर इज अ बायोलेट्रल कॉर्नुअल ब्लॉक वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड लैप्रोस्कोपी राइट नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड लैप्रोस्कोपी करने में द ब्लॉक इज गोइंग टू बी रिलीव इफ द ब्लॉक परसिस्ट यू हैव टू गो फॉर आईवीएफ All questions done. Now look at this over here. Look at this over here. This HSG. Now what are you seeing in this HSG? In this HSG, I am seeing that through the Leach-Wilkinson cannula, dye has come inside the uterus. It is going in the tubes, but uske baad I am seeing that the tubes are dilated. right and i am seeing ki the dye is not coming out that means this is a bilateral distal block right and jab bhi bilateral distal block hoga and they ask you what is the next step next step hamesha yahi rahega next step always is hysteroscopy and laparoscopy so hysteroscopy and laparoscopy and jab bhi bilateral distal block severe hoga management is ivf severe kab kehte hain jab is tarike ki appearance mile this is hydrosalpinx so jab bhi aisi appearance mile ki tubes are ballooned tubes are inflated swollen tubes hain that means hydrosalpinx and that means ivf to so jab bhi aisi image denge management best management is ivf next step is hysteroscopy and laparoscopy this much you have to remember about the blocks right 
now they ask you what is the epithelial lining of fallopian tube so epithelial lining of fallopian tube is ciliated columnar epithelium right next question which of the following will have false positive bar bodies now tell me bar body kya hota hai bar body is number of x chromosomes minus 1 right ek female mein जब 46 XX होता है नॉर्मल क्रोमोजोम नंबर सो फीमेल्स में हाउ मेनी बार बॉडी वन एक नॉर्मल मेल्स में जीरो बार बॉडी राइट दैट इज वन कॉन्सेप्ट सेकेंड कॉन्सेप्ट इज कि जब वाई क्रोमोजोम प्रेजेंट होता है देन वी से द जेंडर इज मेल एंड जब वाई क्रोमोजोम एबसेंट होता है तब हम कहते हैं जेंडर फीमेल राइट सो नाउ दे आर सेइंग फॉल्स पॉजिटिव फॉल्स पॉजिटिव का मतलब कि आइडियली इन अ मेल जीरो बार बॉडी शुड बी प्रेजेंट अब ऐसा मेल जिसमें वन बार बॉडी इज प्रेजेंट दैट इज अ फॉल्स पॉजिटिव सो लेट अस सी ओ बी टर्नर सिंड्रोम इज फोर्टी फाइव जीरो बार बॉडी ट्राइसोमी 21, वन ट्राइसोमी ट्वेंटी का मतलब है कि इफ दे आर 46 फीमेल है विथ ट्राइसोमी 41, वन सो इट विल बी वन बार बॉडी बट देन फीमेल है तभी वन बार बॉडी मिल रही है सो दिस इज नॉट फॉल्स पॉजिटिव राइट क्लाइन फेल्टर्स फोर्टी सिक्स सेवन एक्स एक्स वाई अब यहां पे देखो क्लाइन फेल्टर्स में प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वाई क्रोमोजोम प्रेजेंट है वाई क्रोमोजोम प्रेजेंट मीन्स आई एम टेकिंग दिस एज अ केस ऑफ मेल and because they have 46 7x xy do x chromosomes hai to bar body kitni hogi one ideally ek male mein koi bar body nahi honi chahiye yahan pe you are getting false positive bar body jaise hi hum one bar body dekhenge i will show this is a female but actually they are not females they are 47 xx y and jab y chromosome present hota hai they are males please understand this very well hamesha male and female is decided by whether y chromosome is present or y chromosome is absent y chromosome present male y chromosome absent female right bar body is not a very good method for sex determination why i'll tell you this reason abhi in a normal female one bar body is present in a normal male zero bar body is present clear to all of you right ab imagine klein felter syndrome klein felter syndrome is 47 x x y y chromosome present hai that is why i am saying they are males lekin ye aisa male hai jisme one bar body is present are you understanding this so this is false positive jab bhi positive aa raha hai bar body it means it should be a female and jab bhi negative aa raha hai it means it should be a male right yahan pe positive aa raha hai one bar body is present positive aa raha hai but actually they are male so this is false positive bar body ab imagine in case of turner syndrome turner syndrome mein there is no y chromosome Because there is no Y chromosome, they are taken as females. लेकिन bar body कितनी है They have zero bar bodies. यानी कि this is false negative. Ideally, Turner syndrome are females, so एक bar body, one bar body should have been present. But they are false negative. and klein felters are males no bar body should have been present but in them one bar body is present that means they are false positive androgen insensitivity syndrome is 46 xy so zero bar bodies right so false positive bar body kis mein mil rahi hai klein felters syndrome agar samajh mein nahi aaya so i just want you to remember false positive bar body is seen in klein felters false negative bar body is seen in turners is that clear to all of you yes samajh mein aa gaya okay now klein felters pe 
मेनी क्वेश्चन आर आस्ड सो क्लाइंट फेल्टर्स के जो पेशेंट्स होते हैं प्लीज रिमेंबर अ फ्यू थिंग्स अबाउट क्लाइन फेल्टर सिंड्रोम दे आस्क यू क्वेश्चन ऑन क्लाइन फेल्टर सिंड्रोम इन योर एफ एम जी एग्जाम क्लाइन फेल्टर सिंड्रोम दे आर फोर्टी सिक्स एक्स एक्स वाई दे आर मेल्स दे आर मेल्स राइट दे हैव अ फॉल्स पॉजिटिव बार बॉडी they have tall stature they have a tall stature they have a zoospermia they will have a zoospermia right they come to you with complain of infertility so they they come to you with complain of male infertility and they have guy they can have gynecomastia they may have gynecomastia so 47 xxy males hote hain false positive bar body hoti hai tall stature hota hai in males ka a zoospermia hota hai they don't have sperms and that is why they come to you with complain of infertility some of them may have gynecomastia right are you going to remember this much on turner syndrome a uh, on kleinfelter syndrome all of you now look at this question a couple came to you with complain of infertility on examination her husband had gynecomastia and tall stature what is the likely diagnosis the likely diagnosis is kleinfelter's syndrome right are you understanding turner syndrome short stature hota hai and ye females hoti hain 45 xo swyer syndrome normal stature hota hai and ye bhi female ki tarah aati hain ye males ki tarah nahi present karte hain testicular feminizing syndrome may be normal stature hota hai and ye females hoti hain so even if you didn't know anything about klein felters you can eliminate and you can come to the answer right please learn the technique of elimination eliminating the options har cheez padhai nahi ja sakti and har cheez yaad nahi rakhi ja sakti right more than teaching it's more about your remembering so try to eliminate the wrong options and you will come to the correct answer we all know ki turner syndrome females ki tarah present karte hain swyer syndrome primary amenorrhea females ki tarah present karte hain testicular feminizing syndrome primary amenorrhea female ki tarah present karte hain right now match the following conditions with their respective karyotype mrkh mein kya karyotype hota hai they are 46 xx swyer syndrome 46 xy androgen insensitivity again 46 xy turner syndrome 45 xo klein felter syndrome 47 xxy clear chal now coming to infertility so females may infertility ka one of the reason is an ovulation and that is the most common reason so test for an ovulation so test for an ovulation may you have to check for serum progesterone levels on day 21 ya day 22 this is the easiest and the best test best test to know whether a female is ovulating or not is serum progesterone levels which you have to do on day 21 or day 22 then you can also go for cervical mucus study vaginal epithelial study endometrial biopsy and basal body temperature and follicular monitoring follicular monitoring is done between day 7 to day it is started sorry follicular monitoring is started from day 10 of the cycle on alternate days on alternate days baki jitne bhi ye test hain all of them are done on day 21 ya day 22 of the cycle right 
all these tests are done on day 21 ya day 22 of the cycle follicular monitoring has to be done from day 10 of the cycle on alternate days right a follicles may bade sare follicles hote hain right so it can be a preantral follicle antral follicle then it can be a graphian follicle so if in the follicle you see a cavity whenever in a follicle you are seeing a cavity cavity present hai to it means it is antral cavity and that means it is antral follicle whenever a cavity is seen it means it is antral cavity and the follicle is antral follicle right mature follicle मेच्योर फॉलिकल को कहते हैं ग्राफियन फॉलिकल मेच्योर फॉलिकल इज कॉल्ड एज ग्राफियन फॉलिकल एंड ग्राफियन फॉलिकल इज 18 टू 20 मिलीमीटर्स इन साइज जस्ट बिफोर ओव्यूलेशन जस्ट बिफोर ओव्यूलेशन सो वन क्वेश्चन इज एंट्रल फॉलिकल क्या होता है एंट्रल फॉलिकल इज A follicle which has got antral cavity. So cavity, if you see in the diagram, mein, it means it is antral follicle. Second question is that graphian follicle ka what is the size just before ovulation? So the size just before ovulation is 18 to 20 millimeters, right? Then what is the drug of choice for an ovulation? Now, if PCOS me question aata, what is the drug of choice? Then the answer was letrozole. But agar question simply aa raha hai, what is the drug of choice for an ovulation? They are not talking about PCOS. Then the answer is clomiphen citrate. PCOS me answer is letrozole. Otherwise, the answer is clomiphen citrate. Please remember. which hormone brings is used as ovulation trigger is used as ovulation trigger jab bhi aap koi bhi drug use kar rahe ho to kaun sa hormone is used as ovulation trigger i'm writing trigger in a proper manner so that you don't get confused trigger so the hormone which brings about ovulation trigger is injection hcg because injection hcg is similar to injection lh hmg nahi beta hmg is the one which brings about ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome may be triggering factor always is hcg jab bhi ovulation trigger hona hai ya ohss ko trigger hona hai ओव्यूलेशन ट्रिगर पूछे तब भी इंजेक्शन एचसीजी ओएचएसएस में ट्रिगर पूछे तब भी इंजेक्शन एचसीजी ड्रग पूछे कि विच लीड्स टू ओएचएसएस इट इज इंजेक्शन एचएमजी बट ट्रिगरिंग पॉइंट ऑलवेज इज इंजेक्शन एचसीजी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस सो टेस्ट फॉर एन ओव्यूलेशन में यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ दीज टेस्ट द बेस्ट टेस्ट इज सीरम प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन लेवल्स राइट right, जिसको हम डे 21 या डे 22 पे करते हैं ऑफ द साइकिल द अदर टेस्ट आर सर्वाइकल म्यूकस देन विजाइनल एपिथीलियल एंडोमेट्रियल बायोप्सी वो भी डे 21 डे 22 पे देन फॉलिकुलर मॉनिटरिंग इज डन फ्रॉम डे 10 फॉलिकुलर मॉनिटरिंग में अगर आपको कैविटी दिख रही है फॉलिकल के अंदर दैट मीन्स यू आर लुकिंग एट एंट्रल फॉलिकल साइज ऑफ ग्राफियन फॉलिकल जस्ट बिफोर ओवलेशन इज 18 टू 20 मिलीमीटर वॉट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर एन ओवलेशन क्लोमिफिन सिट्रेट वॉट इज द ओवलेशन ट्रिगर द ओवलेशन ट्रिगर इज इंजेक्शन एच सी जी राइट नाउ नाउ देन कम वॉट आर द टेस्ट फॉर ओवेरियन रिजर्व वॉट डू यू मीन बाय टेस्ट फॉर ओवेरियन रिजर्व दीज आर द टेस्ट विच टेल यू whether follicles are present in the ovary or not whether follicles are present in the ovary or not these are those tests to so in test ko karte hain day 3 pe right so ovulation ke liye test karte the day 21 ya day 22 pe then hsg karte the on day 7 to day 10 and test for ovarian reserve are done on day 3 
डे थ्री पे इफ यू आर गेटिंग कि एफएसएच लेवल्स हाई हैं इनबिन लेवल्स डिक्रीज हैं एंट्रल फॉलिकल काउंट डिक्रीज है देखो अगर फॉलिकल्स नहीं है ओवरी में तो दैट मीन्स ईस्ट्रोजन नहीं है दैट ऑल्सो मीन्स इनिबिन नहीं है बिकॉज बोथ ऑफ देम आर रिलीज फ्रॉम ग्रेनिलोसा सेल्स एंड इनिबिन या ईस्ट्रोजन नहीं है तो द नेगेटिव फीडबैक ऑन एफ एस एच इज गॉन सो एफ एस एच विल बी इंक्रीज दिस इज वेरी सिमिलर टू प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज फॉलिकल्स नहीं है इसका मतलब पेशेंट इज हैविंग प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज एंड आई टोल्ड यू जब भी एफ एस एच लेवल्स हाई है इट मीन्स प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज सो कभी भी हमने ओवेरियन रिजर्व के टेस्ट करने हैं तो हमें कौन कौन से टेस्ट करने हैं हमें डे थ्री पे एफ एस एच लेवल्स देखना है डे थ्री पे इनबिन लेवल्स देखना है एंड डे थ्री पे टीवीएस में देखना है कितने फॉलिकल्स मिल रहे हैं दैट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड हैज एंट्रल फॉलिकल काउंट कि डू अ टीवीएस एंड काउंट द नंबर ऑफ फॉलिकल्स सो ऑब्वियसली कॉमन सेंस टेल्स मी इफ देर आर नो फॉलिकल्स द लेवल द नंबर ऑफ फॉलिकल्स विल बी लेस राइट बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ फॉलिकल्स विल बी लेस सो दे विल बी लेस ईस्ट्रोजन लेस इनिबिन एंड सो द लेवल्स ऑफ एफ एस एच विल इंक्रीज राइट एंड आई विल मेक अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज बट ऑल दीज टेस्ट हैव टू बी डन ऑन डे थ्री सो दैट इज वाई दे आर नॉट द बेस्ट टेस्ट बेस्ट टेस्ट इज एंटी मुलेरियन हॉर्मोन ए एम एच Why is AMH the best test? Because it can be done on any day, and AMH is secreted from puberty onwards by the granulosa cells of the small antral and preantral follicles. So, जितने भी granulosa cells होते हैं, puberty के बाद, from the antral and preantral follicles, they also secrete AMH. So, in case of decreased ovarian reserve, AMH levels will be decreased. Right? Normally, AMH levels are between one to three or one to three point five. If they become less than one, that that means borderline. If it becomes less than zero point five, that means premature menopause or POI. Right? So, AMH is the best test for ovarian reserve. And the question which they had asked you, which of the following best measures ovarian reserve? So, which of the following best measures ovarian reserve? एंटी मुलेरियन हॉर्मोन अब बताओ मुझे सपोज एक फीमेल है जिसमें फॉलिकल्स ही नहीं है प्री मेच्योर मेनोपॉज है राइट right? उसको अगर हमें प्रेग्नेंट बनाना है तो वॉट कैन आई डू इन दिस केस आई कैन यूज डोनर एग एंड आई कैन डू एन आई वी एफ विथ डोनर एग दैट इज द ओनली वे इन विच आई कैन मेक हर हैव हर बेबी राइट सो हर हजबेंड स्पर्म and a donor egg and then i do ivf clear to all of you yes then comes semen analysis now before we talk about semen analysis please remember jab bhi ek infertile couple aata hai in all infertile couples uh, in all for couples who are complaining of infertility you have to do three basic investigations three tests you have to do in them what are those three tests number 1 you have to do serum progesterone levels on day 21 ya day 22 because you will come to know whether the female is ovulating or not then you have to do hsg for tubal patency i want to see ki uski tubes patent hai ki nahi hai and number 3 i have to do husband may semen analysis these are the three basic investigations which you have to do whenever a couple is coming to you with infertility these three things tubal patent hsg kab karenge between day 7 to day 10 right now when should you start testing for infertility when if female is less than 35 years and there is one year of unprotected intercourse after one year of unprotected intercourse 
मोर देन थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स में आफ्टर सिक्स मंथस ऑफ अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस केवल ये याद रखो लेस देन थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स में आफ्टर वन ईयर ऑफ अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस एंड मोर देन थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स में आफ्टर सिक्स मंथस ऑफ अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस राइट नाउ आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू वंस द क्लास इज ओवर यू आर गोइंग टू लर्न द न्यू वैल्यूज ऑफ सीमन एनालिसिस राइट ऑल ऑफ यू आर गोइंग टू रिमेंबर दिस प्लीज रिमेंबर ये जितनी भी न्यू वैल्यूज आई हैं उसमें टोटल स्पर्म काउंट इज द सेम एंड मॉर्फोलॉजी का क्राइटेरिया नहीं बदला दीज टू क्राइटेरिया हैव नॉट चेंज टोटल स्पर्म काउंट इज अनचेंज एंड द मॉर्फोलॉजी क्राइटेरिया इज अनचेंज राइट हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस मच नाउ so total sperm count and morphology remains unchanged what is aspermia absent semen what is oligospermia when sperm concentration is less than 15 million as per the older criteria and less than 16 million as per the new criteria right severe oligospermia ka kya matlab hota hai less than 5 million so oligospermia means less than 16 million as per the new criteria and severe oligospermia less than 5 million sperms per ml azoospermia no sperms in semen teratospermia abnormal sperm morphology asthenospermia decreased sperm motility necrozoospermia increased non viable sperms what is the most important parameter in semen analysis sperm morphology is the most important followed by motility followed by concentration if on semen analysis you are getting azoospermia and they ask you what is the next step next step is repeat semen analysis after one month and if still the report is saying you azoospermia then what is the next step then you have to do fsh so if you are getting azoospermia and they ask you what is the next step next step is you have to repeat semen analysis after one month after one month again if you are getting semen analysis uh, as uh, azoospermia it is still present then you have to check fsh levels deliberately maine more than 40 years pe infertility ka criteria nahi bataya tha because you will get confused this is for neat for fmg just remember less than 35 years may one year of unprotected intercourse more than 35 years may six months of unprotected intercourse more than 40 years may it is three months but they will not ask you that right chuck so this is what you have to remember on infertility now coming to some case diagnosis so this is a question which came to you that a patient has come to you with dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia please remember jab bhi aapke paas ye word aaye dyspareunia right dysmenorrhea ke sath every time the moment you get dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia together it has to be endometriosis and nothing else dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia means that they are talking about endometriosis endometriosis may along with dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia you get infertility and adnexal mass in charo mein se koi bhi symptoms milenge but dyspareunia aur kisi condition mein nahi milta dysmenorrhea fibroid mein bhi mil sakta hai dysmenorrhea adenomyosis mein bhi mil sakta hai dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia only one condition and that is endometriosis are you understanding this yes now if they ask you what is the most common symptom in endometriosis most common symptom is dysmenorrhea and ye kaisa dysmenorrhea hota hai this is secondary dysmenorrhea what are the per vaginal findings very very important in case of endometriosis in case of endometriosis ye do terms milte hain fixed retroverted uterus kabhi bhi question mein kahe fixed retroverted uterus it means endometriosis right adenexa mein you will get bilateral adenexal mass 
What is this bilateral at an axial mass? These are the chocolate cysts which you will feel. So on per vaginal examination, fixed retroverted uterus and in the adenexa, you will get bilateral adenexal masses. A question ye poochte hain that there is a female who is coming to you. Suppose isi mein ye pooche and they ask you what is the next step. Right? They ask you that a female has come to you with dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia. What is the next step? Please do not say that the next step is laparoscopy. Although the investigation of choice is laparoscopy. But next step is TVS. Khud imagine karo ki aap kisi doctor ke paas gaye ho with complaint of dysmenorrhea, pain during menstruation. And doctor aap se kahe ki mein kal laparoscopy karunga. Are you going to be satisfied with such a doctor? No. You will say pehle ultrasound to karalu. And then get a laparoscopy done. Same thing. So whenever a patient comes to you with dysmenorrhea, even if in your mind you know that it is a case of uh, endometriosis, the next step is never laparoscopy. Next step is TVS. On TVS, what you may see? You may see a chocolate cyst. Chocolate cyst could describe karte hai as a cyst with homogeneous internal echoes. Iska description ye hota hai. On ultrasound ye lik karayega. That a cyst with homogeneous internal echoes was seen. And that means it is chocolate cyst. The investigation of choice is laparoscopy. On laparoscopy, you can get a gunshot appearance. You can get a powder burn appearance. You can get chocolate cyst or you may see nodules. These nodules can be red in color if it is a fresh lesion or, an, or new lesions may. Newer lesions will be red in color. Old lesions will be bluish black in color. Jitne bhi new lesions hai, they will be new and they will be red in color. Old lesions will be black in color. Right? So endometriosis may you have to remember patient comes to you with dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia. There can be infertility at an axial mass. Right? On uh, the first investigation always is TVS. On TVS, you can see a chocolate cyst with internal homoge homogeneous internal echoes. On per vaginal examination, you are going to get a fixed retroverted uterus and you may feel a bilateral adenexal mass. Right? Now, now the question is, what is the best management to prevent recurrence in endometrial cysts? So, recurrence ko prevent karne ke liye best is cystectomy. And that is how you manage a chocolate cyst. Chocolate cyst, if it is more than 5 centimeters, it has to be managed by a laparoscopic cystectomy. Right? What are the symptoms seen in endometriosis? Symptoms seen in endometriosis are dysmenorrhea and infertility. Please remember, menorrhagia is rare. So, we don't have rare symptoms. Menorrhagia is not that common in endometriosis. So, what are the symptoms? Dysmenorrhea and unexplained infertility. So, answer becomes option D, that is 2 and 4. Right? Menorrhagia kam milta hai bachcho. Menorrhagia kyo? But why? Because these endometriotic implants, hain, where are they present? They are present outside the uterus. And because they are present outside the uterus, that is why you don't get menorrhagia so common. What is common symptoms which you are getting here? Dysmenorrhea and unexplained infertility. So over here, the answer should be 2 and 4. Clear to all of you? Yes. Now, ये तो होता है endometriosis में जो endometrium है that is present outside the uterus. Endometrium is present outside the uterus. Most common site is ovary. Second most common site is pouch of Douglas. Right? Now if endometrium is present inside the myometrium, what is that called as? Adenomyosis. That is called as adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is more common in fem multiparous females who are more than 40 years. 
एडीनोमायोसिस में बिकॉज एंडोमेट्रियम इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द मायोमेट्रियम यस यू आर गोइंग टू गेट मेनोरेजिया एंड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट डिसमेनोरिया तो जब डिसमेनोरिया के साथ मेनोरेजिया होता है आई एम नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट एंडोमेट्रियोसिस एंडोमेट्रियोसिस में पेशेंट्स डू नॉट कम टू यू विद मेनोरेजिया एंडोमेट्रियोसिस में पेन के साथ आएंगे मेनोरेजिया नहीं होता अगर मेनोरेजिया एंड डिसमेनोरिया है दैट मींस द डायग्नोसिस इज अडीनोमायोसिस एंड नॉट एंडोमेट्रियोसिस आर यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंडिंग बच्चा यस ओके सो ऑन पर विजाइनल एग्जामिनेशन इन एडीनोमायोसिस यूट्रस इज सिमेट्रिकली एनलार्ज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट इट इज नेवर मोर दैन 12 to 14 weeks pregnant uterus size so it will always be less than 12 to 14 weeks pregnant uterus size it will be symmetrically enlarged and is symmetrically enlarged uterus ko globular uterus bhi kehte hain right and uterus will be tender to touch uterus mein tenderness present hogi right so this is what is very very important that in case of adenomyosis uterus tender hota hai right so in your questions it was asked dysmenorrhea with tender uterus is found in so dysmenorrhea with tender uterus is found in adenomyosis are you understanding agar ye kehte dysmenorrhea with fixed retroverted uterus then my answer would have been endometriosis clear to all of you yes so tender uterus is seen only in one condition and that is adenomyosis fibroid may be uterus is not tender kisi aur condition mein uterus is not tender only in Uh, adenomyosis uterus is tender another very important thing is in adenomyosis uterus is enlarged definitely uterus is enlarged but sorry kitna enlarged it is less than 12 to 14 weeks pregnant uterus size isse kam hoga isse zyada kabhi nahi hoga is that clear to all of you yes okay what is the investigation of choice in adenomyosis investigation of choice is mri but it is not the first investigation first investigation is tvs what is the management management is total abdominal hysterectomy clear right now coming to fibroid fibroid ki patient ki main complaint hoti hai menorrhagia only menorrhagia right generally there is no pain मेनोरेजिया इज द मेन कंप्लेन ब्लीडिंग इज द मेन कंप्लेन उनको पेन से पेन नहीं हो रहा होता अडीनोमायोसिस में पेन एंड ब्लीडिंग राइट एंड एंडोमेट्रियोसिस में ओनली पेन इज दैट क्लियर ऑन पर विजाइनल एग्जामिनेशन इन केस ऑफ फाइब्रॉइड यू गेट एन लार्ज यूट्रस Which is more than 12 to 14 weeks pregnant uterus size, बड़ा enlarged uterus मिलेगा irregular uterus मिलेगा right? क्योंकि fibroid कहीं से भी arise हो सकता है तो irregular होगा uterus and it is not tender, right? Please understand, please understand. that a fibroid can be of three types number one it can be intramural fibroid intramural fibroid ka kya matlab hai a fibroid which is inside the myometrium right then it can be submucous fibroid submucous ka matlab hai it is coming inside the uterine cavity or it can be a sub serous fibroid right so intramural submucous and subserous a fibroid which is growing towards the peritoneal cavity subserous a fibroid which is coming inside the peritoneal cavity uh, inside the uterine cavity submucous and a fibroid which is inside the myometrium only is intramural fibroid right 
Now, please understand that sub mucous fibroid may this also is intramural. This is a typical intramural fibroid, right? A question I tha identify the fibroid marked with X. So the fibroid which is marked with S is X is towards the uterine cavity. So it has to be a sub mucosal fibroid, right? Okay. Now coming to sub mucous fibroids. Sub mucous fibroids they can be type zero, type one, and type two. ये वाला जो fibroid है ना J wala fibroid is a mixture of intramural and subserous. So, this is typical intramural. This is intramural plus subserous. So, FIGO has gradings. Di hai. You don't need to know that. Typical intramural fibroid is this fibroid. This fibroid is a typical intramural fibroid. This is a subserous fibroid, a submucous fibroid. This is a subserous fibroid. As I told you, FIGO has gradings. Di hai. जिसमें I just want you to remember कि सब म्यूकस की three grades होते हैं type zero, type one and type two. Only what you have to remember is why we want you to remember this is क्योंकि type zero and type one fibroid का management is hysteroscopic myomectomy, type two का abdominal myomectomy. So I just want you to remember कि फीगो ने बहुत सारी ग्रेडिंग्स एंड टाइप्स बताए हैं फाइब्रॉइड के बिकॉज ओवरलैपिंग होते हैं जैसे ओवर हियर यू कैन सी ओवरलैपिंग है ये इंट्राम्यूरल भी है एंड ये सब सीरियस भी है ये इनसाइड द मायोमेट्रियम है एंड इट इज ग्रोइंग टुवर्ड्स दी पेरिटोनियल कैविटी आल्सो सो इट इज अ मिक्सचर ऑफ इंट्राम्यूरल एंड सब सीरियस फाइब्रॉइड तो बिकॉज फाइब्रॉइड जरूरी नहीं है कि एक ही टाइप का हो सो बहुत सारी ग्रेडिंग्स दी हुई हैं फाइब्रॉइड की टाइप्स ऑफ फाइब्रॉइड बताए हैं सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सब म्यूकस फाइब्रॉइड कैन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री टाइप्स टाइप जीरो टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू टाइप जीरो एंड टाइप वन का मैनेजमेंट इज हिस्ट्रोस्कोपिक मायोमेक्टमी टाइप टू का मैनेजमेंट इज अबडोमिनल मायोमेक्टमी राइट Is that clear to all of you? Yes. The other thing which you have to remember is a fibroid may become calcified like this. This is called as popcorn calcification. This is called as popcorn calcification, and this popcorn calcification means it is a calcified fibroid. It's a calcified fibroid. Right, so in fibroid, few things are these are the few things which you have to remember. The other thing which you have to remember about fibroid is red degeneration of fibroid. Red degeneration of fibroid is more common in second half of pregnancy. Right, and patient will complain of patient complains of. pain in abdomen plus nausea vomiting right so patient will complain of pain in abdomen nausea and vomiting pregnant patient hai with a fibroid and all of a sudden she has pain in abdomen and nausea vomiting in second half of pregnancy how do you manage it you manage it conservatively management is conservative management please don't say that i will do myomectomy no myomectomy for this patient no termination of pregnancy for this patient you are not going to say i will end her pregnancy you are not going to end her pregnancy you will continue her pregnancy and you will manage it conservatively with analgesics and antiemetics just give her analgesic and antiemetic her pain and nausea vomiting will be taken care of no myomectomy no termination of pregnancy right in case of red degeneration of fibroid jab aap lab investigation karaoge you will see esr is raised wbc count is raised and patient may have fever but remember this is an aseptic condition it is an aseptic condition patient ko fever ho sakta hai esr bhi bada ho sakta hai wbc can also be increased but still it is an aseptic condition 
right in spite of these things you have to say that this is an aseptic condition is that clear to all of you red degeneration of fibroid is very important now i want all of you to look at this doppler ultrasound isme what you are seeing here is a polyp and you are seeing that a single blood vessel is coming up till the center of the polyp so i'm just showing you again you have to focus on this single blood vessel which is coming up till the center of the polyp so remember polyp may in case of polyp so this is what is called as feeder vessel sign feeder vessel sign in a feeder vessel sign you will get a polyp and polyp may a single blood vessel aegi which will go up till the center of the polyp on the other hand if this would have been a fibroid fibroid ke case mein kya hota hai a fibroid is surrounded by pseudo capsule and jo blood vessels hote hain they are present in the pseudo capsule right so blood vessels are present in pseudo capsule blood i this you can't see i am writing it here with another color blood vessels in periphery in pseudo capsule jabki polyp mein ek single blood vessel aata hai which is in going up till the center this is what is feeder vessel sign if you get this and they ask you what is uh, the diagnosis the diagnosis is a polyp so in case of polyps patient will always complain of irregular bleeding agar question mein aaye irregular bleeding ya intermenstrual bleeding please do not say fibroid fibroid ke case mein the complaint is menorrhagia that means excessive bleeding which will be regular normal jo normally jo period hota hai wo heavy hoga right the patient will never say irregular bleeding patient will say ki whenever i have my periods they are very heavy right but in case of polyp patient will say irregular bleeding or there is intermenstrual bleeding so whenever your question says irregular bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding it means it is a polyp investigation of choice in polyp is hysteroscopy right and management is hysteroscopic polypectomy हिस्ट्रोस्कोपिक पॉलीपेक्टमी बट जब आप अल्ट्रासाउंड करते हो क्या दिखता है ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड इफ यू स्विच ऑन दी डॉपलर यू विल गेट अ फीडर वेसल साइन अ सिंगल ब्लड वेसल गोइंग अप टिल दी सेंटर ऑफ दी पॉलिप राइट नाउ दीज आर ग्रॉस इमेजेस ऑफ फाइब्रॉइड एज यू कैन सी फाइब्रॉइड इज व्हाइट इन कलर इट हैज गॉट अ वेरी रफ सर्फेस right it has a world appearance that is a fibroid on the other hand a polyp is a red fleshy mass so if you are seeing a small red fleshy mass that's a polyp now this over here is a symmetrically enlarged globular uterus and that is adenomyosis and jab humne isko cut kiya i am seeing that multiple hemorrhages are present in myometrium these multiple hemorrhages ka kya matlab hai endometrium was present in myometrium and ye endometrium menstruation ke time pe bleed kari and that is why i am getting multiple red red spots inside the myometrium right so this is a adenomyosis coming to vaginitis many questions are asked on vaginitis in your papers I hope all of you are understanding this. Yes. All of you just show me a thumbs up if you are understanding. Okay. Now, vaginitis mein 
the first thing is physiological discharge now physiological discharge how am i going to know that the discharge is physiological your question is going to say that there is a color okay i have understood that you are understanding so the question is going to say that there is a colorless discharge there is no itching and it is odorless ye teeno cheeze agar di hain colorless no itching and odorless then it means it is physiological discharge so physiological discharge is colorless no itching and it is odorless same cheeze agar di ki it is colorless no itching but they are saying that there is fishy odor or foul smelling odor odorless tha to physiological tha odor ke sath agar present hai to that means it is bacterial vaginosis right so colorless discharge ya whitish discharge which is not causing any itching and it is odorless is physiological but same kind of discharge if it has odor it me a foul smelling odor it means it is bacterial vaginosis in bacterial vaginosis they are going to say that when a microscopic examination was done clue cells are present clue cells are present the moment you read this word clue cells ek to foul smelling odor padho and if agar clue cells dekho clue cells ka matlab hai again they are talking about bacterial vaginosis clue cells are epithelial cells they are vaginal epithelial cells to which bacteria are adhered what are clue cells they are vaginal epithelial cells to which bacteria are adhered like this so yahan pe dekho aisi appearance aa rahi hai right so this is what is clue cell the moment they give you this image it means they are talking about bacterial vaginosis what is the drug of choice for bacterial vaginosis metronidazole right it is not an std so no partner treatment the criteria for diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis is amsels criteria and wif test is positive in case of bacterial vaginosis ye kuch kuch cheeze milengi but diagnosis mein ye keval ye denge that you have get female is having a grayish discharge or white color discharge which did not cause any itching and it was foul smelling and clue cells were present right it means that it is bacterial vaginosis drug of choice is metronidazole pregnant females may you can use metronidazole or you can use clindamycin right now in case your question is saying that there is profuse frothy discharge ye word frothy hoga right and yellowish green in color there is pruritus itching present hai and strawberry cervix ya strawberry vagina this is how strawberry like cervix or strawberry like vagina is present right so this is strawberry cervix or strawberry vagina this means they are talking about trichomonas pruritus hai frothy discharge hai yellowish green in color hai strawberry cervix ya strawberry vagina means trichomonas again the drug of choice is metronidazole this is an std and that is why partner treatment should be done partner treatment should be done right and if they are talking about and this is called spy trichobonas all of you know which is a motile flagellated protozoa right theek hai now comes candida can dose kabhi bhi nahi puchhenge then comes candida candida ke patient na discharge se zyada unko problem hoti hai pruritus so the main problem is pruritus and they will have a curdy white discharge ya cottage cheese like discharge 
drug of choice is fluconazole candida mein jo ph of the discharge hota hai that is less than 4.5 right so drug of choice is fluconazole now in pregnant females the drug of choice is topical imidazoles so yahan pe oral fluconazole tha it is topical imidazole like clotrimazole clotrimazole right clear to all of you now these days we are going for syndromic management syndromic management of vaginal discharge mein green kit is used that is kit number 2 and this kit number 2 will have fluconazole and instead of having metronidazole it has secnidazole that is one thing which you have to remember ideally hum metronidazole use karte hain lekin in kits mein it is secnidazole right and for vaginal discharge partner treatment is not done ab agar aapka question kahe ki पर स्पेक्युलम एग्जामिनेशन किया एंड देर वॉज अ सर्वाइकल इरोजन या सर्वाइकल अल्सर प्रेजेंट था तो पेशेंट डिस्चार्ज के साथ आई एंड वेन अ पर स्पेक्युलम एग्जामिनेशन वॉज डन यू कैन सी अ सर्वाइकल इरोजन और सर्वाइकल अल्सर देन इंस्टेड ऑफ सेइंग दैट आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रीट हर विथ किट नंबर टू for vaginal discharge you are going to say that i am going to treat her with kit number 1 for cervical discharge this is a question which was asked in neat 2023 and many people got this question wrong patient has come to you with discharge and on per speculum examination if cervical erosion or cervical ulcer is present then please don't say that i am going to use the kit for vaginal discharge then you are going to use the kit for cervical discharge which has got tablet cefexime and tablet azithromycin right now if your patient comes with complaint of lower abdomen pain with any one of the following uterine tenderness adnexal tenderness or cervical movement tenderness cervix ko touch karte hi pain hota hai right that means it is a case of pid and pid mein jo kit use hoti hai that is kit number 6 that is the yellow kit PID के पेशेंट्स में पार्टनर ट्रीटमेंट करते हैं एंड फॉर पार्टनर ट्रीटमेंट यू आर गोइंग टू यूज ग्रे किट क्लियर सो ग्रे किट का यूज इज वन फॉर सर्वाइकल डिस्चार्ज एंड नंबर टू ग्रे किट इज आल्सो यूज्ड फॉर पार्टनर ट्रीटमेंट इफ योर पेशेंट हैज PID इन योर पेशेंट यू आर गोइंग टू यूज किट नंबर सिक्स बट फॉर पार्टनर ट्रीटमेंट यू आर गोइंग टू यूज द ग्रे किट दैट इज किट नंबर वन right now identify this instrument all of you know that this is a cascos speculum right now what is the probable diagnosis from the image the probable diagnosis now first tell me either it can be uterine inversion ya it can be prolapse now how am i going to identify ki ye inversion hai ki prolapse hai simple अगर आपको ऑस दिख रहा है इफ ऑस इज विजिबल इफ ऑस इज सीन इट मीन्स इट इज अ केस ऑफ प्रोलैप्स इफ ऑस इज नॉट सीन दैट मीन्स इट इज अ केस ऑफ इन्वर्जन केवल यूट्रस दिख रहा है ऑस नहीं दिख रहा है सो यूट्रस दिख रहा है plus os is dikh raha hai that means prolapse uterus seen but os not seen this is os that means inversion yahan pe i can see the os that means it is a case of prolapse right do not say it is a case of inversion in inversion you will never see the os in or in inversion only uterus will be seen but os will not be seen now in case of prolapse what is the risk factor what is the most important risk factor birth trauma birth trauma is a very important risk factor and menopause birth trauma and menopause most important being birth trauma right now how do you manage a prolapse that depends upon ki kaisi patient aa rahi hai 
if a patient comes with prolapse and she wants future child bearing so in that case i will go for sling surgery i will go for a sling surgery please explain gt pal in short beta gt pal i have explained in the obs videos chalo i'll explain to you towards the end i will explain right so stay till the end if i get time definitely i will explain and if you people are uh, you know wanting to stay here for long because it is already 12:30 right so if there is a female who wants future child bearing and she has a third degree prolapse i will go for sling surgery if female is more than 40 years she doesn't want any uh, future child bearing and she has third degree prolapse now i will do father gill surgery father gill surgery so if female wants child bearing sling surgery if female is more than 40 years abhi menopausal nahi hui hai right and she says i don't want further child bearing so you will go for father gill surgery now if female is menopausal and she doesn't have any medical problems but and she has a third degree prolapse third degree prolapse then the answer is vaginal hysterectomy vaginal hysterectomy so in a menopausal female if she doesn't have any medical problems i can easily go for vaginal hysterectomy right if she is a menopausal female who has come to you with prolapse and she has medical problems in that case you will say i will do lefort colpoclysis lefort colpoclysis now if your question says that menopausal female hai and more than 65 hai a more than 65 hai to no surgery then ring pessary ring pessary right so depending upon what your question is saying you are going to manage it this way menopausal female with medical problems and she has to be less than 65 years go for lipots colpoclysis menopausal female more than 65 years lipots bhi nahi karenge i will go for ring pessary menopausal female hai koi medical problem nahi hai right i will go for vaginal hysterectomy clear to all of you yes theek hai now condition and named surgeries this list you are going to make with me and we are going to complete this list quickly cystoseal and urethroseal ki surgery ko kya kehte hain this is surgery for cystoseal and urethroseal is called as anterior colporaphy what is the surgery for rectoseal called as it is called as posterior colpo perineo raphi right what is what are you asking what is the difference between colpo scopy and colpoclysis beta colposcopy is a diagnostic procedure colpoclysis is a therapeutic procedure which is used in prolapse right enteroseal ki surgery is mec cal caldoplasty mec cal caldoplasty caldoplasty i am writing it properly so that you don't make any mistake caldoplasty vault prolapse vault prolapse kya hota hai vault prolapse is prolapse of vagina after hysterectomy and what is the surgery for vault prolapse that is uterosacral suspension sui stress urinary incontinence stress urinary incontinence stress sui kya hota hai if a female has 
involuntary passage of urine on laughing on sneezing on coughing so a female has involuntary passage of urine on laughing sneezing coughing that is what is sui sui ki best surgery best surgery for sui is bursch colpo suspension most commonly done is tot followed by tpt right okay septate uterus ki surgery ko kya kehte hain septate uterus surgery surgery for septate uterus what surgery do you do for septate uterus the surgery which you are going to do for septate uterus is hysteroscopic so uh, with hysteroscopy you are going to do septa you are going to cut the septa right hysteroscopic resection of septa bicornuate uterus ki surgery ko kya kehte hain strossman मेट्रोप्लास्टी सी आई एन वन में क्या करते हैं सी आई एन वन में यू फॉलो अप फॉर टू इयर्स इफ इट परसिस्ट देन यू गो फॉर क्रायो एबलेशन सी आई एन टू एंड सी आई एन थ्री में क्या करते हैं LEEP या एल एल ई टी जी कैंसर सर्विक्स का मैनेजमेंट कैंसर सर्विक्स में अपटिल स्टेज टू ए वन मोस्टली आप हिस्ट्रेक्ट में करते हो राइट right? मोस्टली आप हिस्ट्रेक्ट में करोगे प्लस लिंफ नोड डायसेक्शन करोगे so up till stage cin ka matlab uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia cin i have taught in uh, cancer cervix i have taken a lecture i have taught there so please remember this is cervical intraepithelial lesion this is a pre malignant lesion for cancer cervix right leap ya lletz ka matlab kya hota hai large loop excision of transformation zone cin2 and cin3 may never never are you going to say ki hum hysterectomy me karenge hamesha cin2 and cin3 the management is leap or lletz never hysterectomy chahe question kitna marzi confuse karne ki koshish kare ki female 60 years ki hai 65 years ki hai 50 years ki hai never are you going to say i'm going to do hysterectomy right ab jo hysterectomy karte hain yahan pe for C cancer cervix so ye yahan pe khatam tha for cancer cervix up till stage 2a1 aap hysterectomy karoge this can be type 2 ya type 3 टाइप टू हिस्ट्रेक्ट में या टाइप थ्री हिस्ट्रेक्ट में प्लस लिंफ नोट आइसेक्शन लेकिन क्वेश्चन इस पर नहीं आएगा क्वेश्चन आएगा कि अगर कैंसर सर्विक्स हो गया है इन स्टेज वन ए वन इन अ यंग फीमेल सो इफ कैंसर सर्विक्स इज हैपनिंग इन अ यंग फीमेल एंड द स्टेज इज वन ए वन वॉट इज द मैनेजमेंट मैनेजमेंट इज कोनाइजेशन कोनाइजेशन राइट कोन शेप्ड में सर्विक्स को कट कर देते हैं कोनाइजेशन फ्रॉम स्टेज टू ए टू टू स्टेज फोर मैनेजमेंट इज कीमो रेडिएशन अगर कीमो रेडिएशन ऑप्शन में नहीं दिया होगा तो आप कीमोथेरेपी मार्क करोगे सॉरी रेडियोथेरेपी मार्क करोगे डू नॉट से कीमोथेरेपी नॉट कीमोथेरेपी always you have to mark the answer as radiotherapy best answer is chemo radiation 
right and if uh, chemo radiation is not given then chemo therapy should not be marked then you have to mark the answer as radiotherapy uh, who is spamming this and my attention is getting diverted okay now chemo radiation or radiotherapy me kya difference hai chemo radiation ka matlab hai that before giving radiotherapy you will give cisplatin which is a radio sensitizer right so cisplatin kya karega it is going to increase the sensitivity of the cells towards radiotherapy that is why we say chemo radiation is the best answer and if chemo radiation is not given radiotherapy never say chemotherapy right have you understood okay identify this instrument this is a curette right so it is a blunt and a sharp curette okay then what is this instrument this instrument is a uterine sound please remember a uterine sound and a bladder sound should always be differentiated bladder sound mein ek knob hota hai right and bladder sound is calibrated right so that is a bladder sound this over here is uterine sound uterine sound say you can measure the length of the uterus right so hum uterine sound ko kab use karenge jab hum dilatation and curettage karne lagenge usse pehle i'll use a uterine sound when i have to remove iucd i can use a uterine sound for suction evacuation i can use a uterine sound endometrial biopsy is an opd procedure right and isme you don't need to go for uterine sound clear okay then few important points about hpv in hpv please remember the low risk subtypes are hpv 6 and 11 and they lead to genital warts sorry they lead to genital warts high risk subtypes you have to remember these because they are all used for gardasil 9 right so gardasil 9 protects against all these that is why you have to use them 16 18 31 33 45 52 58 you you have to remember these high risk subtypes now hpv can lead to cancers females may it can lead to high risk subtypes can lead to cancer cervix cancer vulva cancer vagina in males high risk subtypes can lead to anus cancer penis cancer right and orogenite oral cancers right now low risk subtypes are 6 and 11 which lead only to genital warts hpv vaccines mein you have to remember ki Gardasil ko yaad rakho Gardasil is a quadrivalent vaccine which protects against HPV 6 11 16 and 18 then Gardasil 9 ko yaad rakho which is a nonavalent vaccine which is protecting against nine strains all these nine strains you should remember you also have to remember ki abhi abhi India has launched its first cancer cervix vaccine which is Cervavac Cervavac is again a quadrivalent vaccine which is protecting against 6 11 16 and 18 and it is prepared by serum institute of india pune right then all these vaccines are prepared from l1 capsid protein age group for giving hpv vaccine is 9 to 26 years in high risk females you can give it between 27 to 45 years ideal age is 11 to 12 years who sage recommendation who sage recommendations pe question aata hai now it is said that who kehta hai between 9 to 20 years you have to give one or two doses right more than equal to 20 years 21 years pe two doses so 9 to 20 years tak one or two more than equal to 21 pe two doses hiv positive mein three doses very simple 9 to 20 years may one or two right 
देन मोर देन इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी वन पे टू एंड देन एच आई वी पॉजिटिव है देन थ्री डोजेस राइट देर इज नो नीड फॉर डूइंग एच पी वी डी एन ए टेस्टिंग बिफोर गिविंग द वैक्सीन वैक्सीन कैन बी गिवन टू सेक्शुअली एक्टिव फीमेल्स ऑल्सो इट इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन प्रेगनेंसी मोस्ट कॉमन साइड इफेक्ट इज सिंकपी and after vaccination do not stop screening everything about cancer cervix screening i have told you in the chota packet video right so go and watch that now this swelling whenever it comes to you this image whenever it comes to you it is a bartholin cyst right so whenever you get this swelling it is a bartholin cyst right what is the management of bartholin cyst please answer change hua hai Management for Bartholin cyst is incision and drainage. अगर question आएगा recurrent cyst, incision and drainage. अगर question आता है management of recurrent Bartholin cyst, the word recurrent should be there. Then you are going to say marsupialization. then it is marsupialization right so whenever this image comes it's a bartholin cyst management of bartholin cyst is incision and drainage management of recurrent bartholin cyst is marsupialization we have done all this precocious puberty now i want now i'm going to end the session because everything after this is something which you have to read you have to go through this table of emergency contraception please remember कि इंडिया में वी आर गिविंग जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मोस्ट कॉमनली दे रहा है दैट इज 1.5 पॉइंट फाइव एम जी सिंगल डोज ऑफ लीवो नॉर्जेस्ट्रल दैट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन इमरजेंसी कॉन्ट्रसेप्शन विच इज बींग यूज इमरजेंसी कॉन्ट्रसेप्शन मीन्स दैट यू आर यूजिंग इट आफ्टर अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस यू हैव टू यूज इट आफ्टर अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस राइट बेस्ट टाइम इज यू गिव इट विद इन 72 hours but maximum you can use it up till 5 days right maximum it can be used up till 5 days right but up man lo ek patient hamare ek female aati hai who is a case of rape and she comes to you on fifth day on fifth day agar aa rahi hai so in that case see पहले तो एनी फीमेल हुज कमिंग टू यू ऑन फिफ्थ डे द बेस्ट थिंग इज कॉपर आईयूसीडी मोस्ट इफेक्टिव मेथड इज कॉपर आईयूसीडी राइट सबसे ज्यादा इफेक्टिव जो होता है दैट इज कॉपर आईयूसीडी एंड कॉपर आईयूसीडी कैन बी यूज्ड विद इन फाइव डेज आफ्टर अनप्रोटेक्टेड इंटरकॉस बट देन इट इज नॉट सुटेबल फॉर रेप विक्टम्स बिकॉज इन्फेक्शन एंड टीयर्स वगैरह होंगे राइट तो फाइव डेज पे रेप विक्टम अगर आ रही है देन वॉट शुड आई डू बिकॉज लीवो नॉर जेस्ट्रल जो है दिस इज बेस्ट ओनली अपटिल सेवेंटी टू आवर्स मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज होता है एंड इट इज यूज ओनली अपटिल सेवेंटी टू आवर्स राइट कॉपर आईयूसीडी कैन बी यूज ऑन फिफ्थ डे लेकिन कॉपर आईयूसीडी इज नॉट वेरी गुड फॉर रेप विक्टम्स सो इन दैट केस यू आर गोइंग टू यूज यूली प्रिस्टाइल यूली प्रिस्टाइल कैन बी यूज टिल Five days. You can use it. Use uliprostal till five days, right? Now, one very big confusion that you all have is that it 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 is that progesterone only pills are not emergency contraceptives progesterone only pill jo india mein available hai it has desogestrel and desogestrel is not an emergency contraceptive right similarly copper iucd is an emergency contraceptive mirna is not an i uh, emergency contraceptive mesoprostol is not an emergency contraceptive mifepristone is an emergency contraceptive so please remember most commonly used emergency contraceptive is levonorgestrel most effective is copper most effective hormonal is ulipristal 
copper iucd and ulipristal both of them can be used up till 5 days copper iucd although it is the best one it is not very good for a rape victim so if a rape victim is coming on day 5 i would prefer ulipristal if ulipristal is not given in the options then okay go for copper iucd but if ulipristal is given in the options then i am going to go for ulipristal right iske alawa mala d ya ocps are also used as emergency contraceptive scent croman is used as emergency contraceptive and mifepristone is used as emergency contraceptive emergency contraceptives they are going to should they should be used ideally between within 72 hours of unprotected intercourse but they can be used up till 5 days right then i want you to remember absolute contraindications of ocps the mnemonic is banks have various schemes to provide home loans during may just go through it these are absolute contraindications of ocps which should be on your fingertips then absolute contraindications of iucd agar ye psm mein kuch different padhaya hai although if you are a student of maro uh, dr mukmohit has taught you these absolute contraindications only but if you are not a subscriber of maro and you have studied from elsewhere i want you to remember these not because i am telling you because these are the most updated ones right so this is what i wanted to uh, wanted to revise with you before your fmg exam uh please remember that till now what you have done you just have to revise that much keep on revising what you have done give focus lay more stress on pyqs and jab pyq kar rahe ho don't just do the pyq do the previous year topic as well do that particular topic and i'm sure all of you will sail through you have to get 150 marks and there is no negative marking right so why are you taking that stress you shouldn't be stressed at all because hame 150 hi to lana hai right and the only thing is that you have to practice mcqs what happens is that so many times you are going to miss out the word except you are going to miss out the word uh, not right so so many times you miss out on those words so that is something which you don't have to do as of now you have 13 days to go from now in these 13 days you are going to revise all the pyqs ये जितने भी सेशंस आपको इंपॉर्टेंट इंपॉर्टेंट सेशंस हैं वेदर इट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन इन ऑब्स काइनी वेदर इट इज अ लास्ट मिनट इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन विच एनी अदर टीचर हैज टेकन एंड इफ यू अटेंडेड दो सेशंस उनके नोट्स को बस रिवाइज करते जाओ बिकॉज एट द लास्ट what the teachers are doing what how do i prepare a session for you i take up all the previous year questions and then i uh, try to cover those questions in a little detailed manner right so that keval wo question cover na ho so that the previous year topic is also covered now uh, saurabh you are asking me about uh, the 6.5 edition revision notes now if you've done edition 6 revision notes and you have to appear for fmg just now you shouldn't be going through edition 6.5 revision videos agar edition 6 kar liya hai that is more than enough if you are a maro subscriber and abhi tak edition 6 ke revision videos nahi kare hain then you can choose uh, either you can do edition 6 revision videos or 6.5 revision videos both of them are good for you right you should be doing that if you are not a maro subscriber in that case if you want to revise obgy gyni i have revised with you today and ops uh, is there on the telegram channel on telegram channel the class which i had taken uh, for allen uh, the entire material i have put it on my telegram channel right so you can go through those notes you will understand everything uh, anything else maro ek to my eyesight डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ए टिपिकल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग बेटा नथिंग यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ए टिपिकल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग अभी जो मैंने बताया ए टिपिकल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग में इफ यू पेशेंट इज हैविंग ब्लीडिंग एंड शी इज कमिंग टू यू विद यू नो टेंडर यूट्रस एंड डिस्मेनोरिया इट मीन्स इट इज अडीनोमायोसिस इफ शी इज कमिंग टू यू विद ए टिपिकल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग एंड दिस ब्लीडिंग इज इरेग्युलर 
right or intermenstrual bleeding it is a polyp if she is having atypical uterine bleeding and the uterus is enlarged it is irregularly enlarged 20 weeks pregnant uterus size it is a fibroid uh staging kaise yaad kare staging i don't want you to remember every staging i just want ki jitne bhi gynae cancers hain whether it is uh, endometrial cancer whether it is cancer cervix or whether it is ovarian cancer just remember stage 3 i want you to remember only stage 3 stage 3 sab ki pad lo agar question aayega to stage 3 se aayega otherwise nahi aayega right gt pal okay so gt pal so whenever gravida is represented by a single number and parity is represented by four numbers that means they are following the gt pal system gravida stands means present plus past conception that means how many times a female has conceived including this time right so gravida me present pregnancy ko bhi include karte hain and how many times in the past she has conceived right parity me जो फर्स्ट नंबर लिखा होगा जीटी पैल सिस्टम में दैट इज नंबर ऑफ प्रीवियस टर्म प्रेगनेंसी वेन डू यू से इट्स अ टर्म प्रेगनेंसी टर्म प्रेगनेंसी का मतलब है एनी डिलीवरी विच इज हैपनिंग आफ्टर 37 सेवन वीक्स बी स्टैंड द सेकेंड नंबर दैट इज बी दिस सेकेंड नंबर बी इज गोइंग टू स्टैंड फॉर नंबर ऑफ प्रीवियस प्री टर्म डिलीवरीज and from where do you count preterm deliveries preterm deliveries should always be counted from 20 weeks to 36 weeks plus 6 days then c stands for number of abortions that is any pregnancy which ends at less than 20 weeks so any pregnancy which is ending at less than 20 weeks it could be ectopic it could be molar and d stands for number of living children so please remember gt pal mein in gt pal this p is number of preterm it is not parity ek to ye cheez dhyan rakhna right and jab aap living children ki baat karte ho in living children twins will be taken as two triplets will be taken as three राइट right? नॉर्मली हम ट्विंस को सिंगल कंसेप्शन मानते हैं ट्रिपलिट्स को सिंगल कंसेप्शन मानते हैं बट वेन एवर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ लिविंग चिल्ड्रन ट्विंस विल बी काउंटेड एज टू एंड ट्रिपलिट्स विल बी काउंटेड एज थ्री ईसीटी कैन बी गिवन इन प्रेगनेंसी सौरभ ईसीटी नॉर्मली वी डोंट गिव इन प्रेगनेंसी राइट सो ईसीटी शुड नॉट बी गिवन इन प्रेगनेंसी नॉर्मली अनलेस एंड अंटल इट्स अ वेरी वेरी सिवियर कंडीशन टिल दैट टाइम यू डोंट गिव ईसीटी इन प्रेगनेंसी क्लियर माई टेलीग्राम चैनल आई टोल्ड यू आई हैव रिटर्न इट हियर बिकॉज यूट्यूब टेलीग्राम एंड एवरी थिंग इज गेट्स मिक्सड अप इट इज इन कैपिटल लेटर्स यू हैव टू सर्च फॉर ओ बी जी बाय साक्षी अरुणा हंस एंड देर आर वेरियस telegram channels which are opened by my name so in my case uh, follow that uh, channel where uh, there are around 34000 subscribers so if there are 34000 subscribers that is my original telegram cha handle now just a small quote which i liked so much and i thought i'll share with you all and before that before that i just want all of you to subscribe to my youtube channel right so subscribe to the youtube channel so that next time if i am taking a class i am not promising but if i get time i will uh, take a class on important images but this is not a promise right but yes uh, please subscribe to the youtube channel and this was a very nice quote which i found manzile unhe nahi milti jinke khwab bade hote hain balki manzile unhe milti hain jo jid par are hote hain so all of you just have to have that confidence and you have to say to yourself that i am going to clear this exam i am not going to quit at this moment right 
so all the best to all of you and i'm sure all of you are going to do really very well uh if you have any queries you can ask me on my telegram handle you can also follow me on my instagram handle for any update which is there ha uh, the pdf i'm going to share it in the group just now immediately after the class i'll share the pdf with all of you right so love you all and all the best to all of you don't forget to subscribe the channel and if you are like if you have liked this video share it with your friends also so that they can also uh, ben get benefit from this last minute revision in gaini right yes you will pass and i'm sure all of you are going to uh, pass take care love you all and i'm going to see you on the other side for neat pg when you are going to attend either my live class or you will be a maro subscriber for neat